Hello, Guardians, and welcome to episode 105 of Podcast vs. Enemies, a Destiny Massive Breakdown show. My name is St. Kabir, and we are all back for a short pre-release break for one last episode before the final shape drops this coming Tuesday. Court, Impetus, how have you guys been? What have you been up to in and out of Destiny for the past couple weeks? Hello, Saint. Hello, Impetus. Hope you lads are doing well. It's been a hot minute since we've been on microphone and chatting with each other, although we've chatted off mic and been doing some content together. But uh, yeah, we're I'm doing fine. Uh, just doing a little bit of final prep for the final shape uh, for uh, Tuesday. I think by the time this episode goes out, it will be during that massive 25 hour uh, maintenance period. So uh, you can listen to us for an hour and a bit. Uh, but uh, more importantly, I got God Slayer with my fellow God Slayers, including Impetus here, but also shout out to Phaeton grind dirt and that sheath saw for the the runs there some really great vibes loved pantheon we'll get on to more pantheon topic at the kind of tail end of this episode uh, and if you've missed it if you've been living under a rock i uh published my prismatic infographic last week uh, so check that one out if you want an overview visual guide on how prismatic works uh, as we head into the final shape impetus how are you doing man Doing well, doing well. It's great to be alongside a company of fellow God Slayers. Very, mm-hmm. very fun experience. Sick emblems, sick title. Yeah, it's been good. My Final Shape prep has been, for the most part, a little bit of last minute onslaught. I'm just trying to go for that perfect shiny mountaintop. Um, mm. I've, I have auto loading uh, recombination on a shiny drop. That'll probably be my mainstay. I love that a lot, but I would love to see at least one roll of auto loading holster and frenzy. That roll still eludes me on any version of mountaintop. Um, I just now recently started getting frenzy to even show up. But other than that, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, we've got these Dev Insight blog articles uh, up here, and I'm looking through those, and then kind of looking through my dim making sure that i've got some stuff in place to take advantage of all those sweet weapon buffs coming which we'll talk about shortly um yeah i'm gonna be spending a little bit of time in dim oh i've got all my seasonal engrams i should probably focus into some high stat armor that'll be nice and then i can do my my dim command to purge all the unoptimal suboptimal rules however they want to describe it and then also remove uh armor mods because i know that that caused some problems last year especially for artifice mm-hmm. armor so don't forget to do that before the game. I guess, could you do that? No, you probably can't do that once the game goes down, right? So you should do that before the the blackout period happens. Don't forget about your mods. Mm-hmm. This is this information is coming to you way too late. I, I don't know why I'm talking about this right now. Hopefully, before you've listened to this episode, you've remembered to remove your mods from your <laughs> armor here. But uh, yeah, that's what I've been working on. Saint, how about you, sir? Yeah, you know, slaying some gods. Um I don't think that I have been this motivated to grind for a title since, uh, like, Fatebreaker, because that one, just, like, super lore, you know, fitting for my, like, character was the last time I, I felt like I was this juiced to grind for a title. It's um, it's just been a good experience. I, I got a couple good, you know, weapons as far as just, like, getting some raid old raid adepts to drop. But more than that, I've really accumulated like a massive amount of raid spoils, I feel like, which was pretty nice. Um, managed to land a good adept uh, forbearance along the way with some really high blast radius, which we'll talk about a little bit later on, but that's becoming a potentially very important stat on on wave frames going forward. Um, yeah, just saved up a bunch of raid spoils for whatever we're going to be getting in the final shape. Um, had some good times, went through multiple clears uh, with my, my team Old Guard from Clan Truth. We've got about we got about nine people in that kind of group now. So it was a lot of, uh, you know, kind of going through and then going back through most weeks. So I ended up doing most of the Pantheon bosses twice for each week, which is a lot of uh, raiding. Um, and then just raiding with some other, you know, friends from Acid Breakdowns and all the kinds of stuff like that. So um, raiding, raiding, and then more uh, after that raiding, um, just cleaning some vaults and yeah looking for the last few weapons i think the the only thing that still eludes me is a firefly one for all 
Midnight Coup is something that I'm I really want, uh, but I've gotten just about everything else on my into the light onslaught shopping list there. So feeling pretty good about that. Um, especially now that we've seen some of these sandbox changes that are coming up that we've talked about a little bit. And yeah, other than that, you know, saving up some exotic ingrams, stacked some bounties, cleaning out the vault, and just getting excited. Man, there, there's been so many trailers and, and little clips coming out from uh, Bungie about new exotics and, and you know, previews of the story. It's, um, it is it is hype train critical mass and it's so looking good it's getting me getting me real hyped up um court before we get into all of our stuff that we've got to cover from the past few weeks who do we got to thank yes as per usual and uh for uh for the uh the, the rest of the the annual experience that we've had so big thanks to everyone that supported us through uh from lightfall up to the final shape but specifically we'd like to call out our fellow sponsors here that's ASCII and monk i am k rose in this moment and just many many others who have supported us through patreon whether you were a sponsor or just a regular member uh, the, the last year and a bit and uh, since episode one as well uh, some tremendous amount of support uh, of course you can send us all kinds of feedback directly to any of our socials or via the dmb discord server positive critical and constructive feedback helps with the trajectory of the podcast and how we present and break down builds activities and much more in the pve sandbox for all kinds of destiny players we also want to extend a special thanks and appreciation to everyone that supports PvE, whether that is downloading and listening to our show, discussing it on social media and our Discord server, or supporting us via Patreon. Speaking of Patreon, if you'd like to support the show, please visit destinymassivebreakdowns.com and click on the link to Patreon. You'll get access to members-only channels in Discord, behind-the-scenes content like episode previews, and input on the future of the show. Eptis, what are we talking about this time for the last time of this uh, Lightfall annual experience? A little bit of looking forward with our final shape sandbox changes. The highlights, we're not here to keep you company for the entire time you're sitting in queue waiting to get in the final shape as much as we would like to do that on a more personal level. But then, of course, we will have our Year of Lightfall and Season 23 the final season review. So those two big parts here, we're going to try and get through things as quickly as possible. We'll slow down to talk about some particular highlights, as I've mentioned, and then maybe some lowlights as well, if we feel inclined, but let's move on with things and get into those sandbox changes. So we're talking dev insights here. We're going to spend probably most of our time here talking about weapon tuning. You know, that's what a lot of you guys like to listen to us for. So we're going to look at the big Big pieces kind of happening, the big buffs, the big removals coming to weapons in the final shape, starting with spec mods. Spec mods are being removed. That's minor, major, boss, big ones, and taken spec are all going to be gone. And to compensate with that loss of extra damage for those weapons, some but not all weapons are getting buffs to their archetypes. So the big one here, the, I think a long requested big one here would be pulse rifles. Pulse rifles are receiving a 20% damage buff to all combatants. That excludes Graviton, Lance, and Revision Zero. And then additionally, for rank and file combatants, pulse rifles are receiving another 15% damage buff, which does include Graviton, Lance, and Revision Zero. So this is going to put pulse rifles which have been lagging behind for quite a while now um, in a pretty top spot going into the final shape. This is a pretty big deal because we have a ton of really, really solid PVE pulse rifles. Um, it's a very popular weapon archetype. We see them a lot in um, dungeons and raids and especially in seasons. So there's a lot of different options that you can go and grab. Um, probably a list that's maybe too big for us to really get into. I had tentatively pulled up a list of stuff kind of going by element and archetype it was there's a lot there's over a dozen i think it's probably the most common um our weapon archetype when you look at the craftable options i think we're sitting at 15 right now and that's i think there's the so highest. many yeah there's a lot and the crafted ones are especially good too so definitely go and take a look at what you have I, again i don't know why i'm giving you advice the game's already down but uh you you probably if you're listening to this do have a really good you know pve role of a pulse rifle where you have a pulse rifle unlocked for crafting that's going to be really strong right now but 
to kind of go over the archetypes here. The best ones, it's they're pretty close, but it, it's going to be about rapid fire and lightweight pulse rifles, and then aggressives kind of just behind that are, are kind of at the top here. High impact and adaptive. It looks like high impact's probably about the... Hmm, they're, they're, they do excel kind of in that bottom end at different things, but lightweights and rapid fire specifically pull away, and I'm looking at Mossy Max's uh, sheet here for reference. The primary minor DPS uh, sheet, just to be clear here. So... Yeah, they're, uh, they're finally sitting in a good spot here. How are we feeling about pulse rifles, guys? There's Okay, so there's one thing that I want to clarify, which I think is I'm, I'm very grateful for. The exclusion on the buff to all combatants excludes revision zero's heavy burst. Mm. Does not say it excludes the hunter trace rounds, which if you're using this as an anti-barrier weapon, um, which, so spoilers, uh, all um, pulse rifles are anti-barrier weapons next season, but Revision Zero is constantly one, and I think that that buff to Hunter's Trace will be really nice for just slamming some damage against targets, um, you know, champs and stuff like that after you're building it up with some more minor enemies. Um, and, yeah, I don't know. I'm just super excited about some stuff that we had gotten that looked really good but just never quite felt good to use. Um you know, we had, like, Adhortative from this current season is got, um, you know, like, Heal Clip and Shoot to Loot in the third column. The last column's got Incandescent and Disruption Break. You can put armor-piercing rounds on that thing. It's a good archetype. It's, you know, you probably have it crafted. Um, you know, the Battler, um, you've got Oversoul Edict. So much good stuff there. And we just got Revision Zero, uh, or not Revision Zero, sorry, Outbreak back and crafted with with new uh traits including rewind rounds which has been awesome the one i wanted to call out though that is probably not at the top of everybody's mind is bad juju um you know, bad juju is a 450 i i believe effectively like a lightweight frame which is kind of like right in the middle of the pulse rifle archetype so it's it's fine um in it has built-in thresh and something that Impetus pointed out well, before we started recording was that its its kinetic property will also benefit fueling your transcendence bar um, even faster because it is a kinetic weapon. And yeah, I'm just really keen in on that. I'm I'm hoping that I'm not coping. You know, um, as a reminder, Bad Juju's string of curses is basically. Uh, a subsistence and then also damage buff it's 20 percent per stack and it can go up to five stacks for a potential cap of 100 percent increase in damage which if you're at a 10 point deficit or less i, th I think is going to be pretty easy to get that ramped up you're at a 15 or 20 point deficit it's probably going to be a you know a little bit more difficult pretty hard to get that ramped up to you know three four stacks which really going to feel impactful but I'm thinking that bad juju could finally feel like some good juju. You know, that's uh, that's where I'm at. Court, what what are your vibes on the on the pulses? Yeah, absolutely echo cool. bad juju is a, 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 a like a highlight for uh, for the changes because it is a 450, so it would uh, confer as a lightweight pulse rifle. I don't think it gets the lightweight bonuses, but it does get the lightweight. Uh, buff here uh as with anything uh, just looking at mossy's chart here um other weapons that i'm looking at in terms of uh legendaries different times which was the uh season 21 uh that was deep taken uh, uh pulse rifle at strand um i currently have stats for all in gold tricorn on it um, I'll just take a quick look here. What else has it got? So it's got um, yeah, not quite a lot of options here. You've got Hatchling here. You've got Collective Action as well. Uh, Multi-Kill -clip, Clip if you want that. Uh, but uh, that is an option if you are looking for a strand. If you've managed to craft that, it looks good as well. I always love that kind of taking effect uh, on those uh, weapons. Uh, you have already mentioned one that was Oversoul Edict from the Crota Raid. We've got Scalar Potential. I mean, if you've been playing a couple of weeks this season, maybe uh, once every week, you would have probably got all the red boxes for uh, season of the Wish weapons, but that came out uh, during season 23. Darkest Before, if you've managed to uh, get a great role for that, I unfortunately have not. I think, uh, what did I actually manage to get? 
Um, so I did get a subsistence incandescent roll, and I got a heal clip surplus roll. So a bit kind of like uh, kind of wanted to you know combine both of them to get the heal clip incandescent roll. Uh, but if you've locked out, and of course that will be enhanceable. Uh, mm -hmm. as well in the final shape uh, that will be a great option uh, so Darkest Before is also a rapid fire uh, you mentioned Battler, uh, Adhortative uh, if you've got Jurassic Green that will obviously come around again later in uh, the autumn uh, uh, of this year and if you're still keeping a Horrors Least uh, if you've still got Grid Skipper um, even like uh, so Whoa. yeah i know <laughs> even void options are few and far between yeah i mean i was looking yeah. at another void option you've got elsie's rifle i know that's not a rapid fire or lightweight but like this buff is to all pulse rifles so if you're not that keen on rapid fires if you're more of a kind of uh high impact or an aggressive frame then like all these options are going to be really good but uh, i think the ideal uh go to will be your rapid fire and your lightweights uh on either the top slot and the second slot one thing that has just occurred to me we, we are getting uh, one particular destiny one raid uh, raid one uh, particular exotic solar weapon it's now made solar uh which is also a pulse rifle uh, and it will be part of the well seasonal that the, the episodical uh track and that is um the the cousin to crimson as a red death which is a pulse rifle I can't remember the. Has, did, did anyone take a note of the, uh, the 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 rounds per minute for uh, for Red Death? Uh, do you guys remember? I think I, I've I seen, seen the a little bit of gameplay. Slower. I think some people were saying it had a stat package reminiscent of a high impact. Okay, I thought so. So uh, that's obviously got a lot more kind of trinkets uh related to the solar sandbox and we'll obviously cover that in uh, the new expansion uh, but that is one to look out for we obviously don't have our hands on uh, that particular weapon right now uh, but that will be going in the uh, second slot so you'll be able to pick between that collective obligation or grabbed and lance but yeah some really great choices here i, I am really digging the fact that uh, pulse rifles are finally getting some big uh, damage buffs some big love uh, and yeah, I, I can't wait to really test any, any of these out. But uh, yeah, Bad Juju is a really good shout there, Saint. The last thing I wanted to point out, given, uh, and we'll talk more about these these weapons in just a second, but given that pulse rifles are anti-barrier weapons, um, do not sleep on the under-over trait. Under-over is a trait that we, we don't recommend a ton, but if it is explicitly for the purpose of using against a barrier champion in, in some kind of nightfall activity or something like that, um, it will up your damage against barriers by 50%. And I, I mean the, the the barrier itself, allowing you to just burn through that really quick, which, um, depending on the weapon, uh, you can get in usually the fourth column, sometimes the third column, um, but yeah, a, a incredibly good trait um, to just burn through those barrier champ shields really nice. And with it being anti-barrier pulse rifle, uh, it will be part of the the whole damage buff, twenty five percent damage buff when it's uh, like the overcharge modifier is active in some uh, content. Uh, so if you want to exploit exo uh, sorry any pulse rifle uh, in those content for that free twenty five percent buff, go for it. There you go. Just put uh, anti champion artifact mod on and. Will completely wreck some uh, profit. Yeah, absolutely profit from uh, killing all those dread enemies. <laughs> well, let's take a look at the anti champion artifact mods here. We've talked about anti barrier pulse rifle. You do also have anti barrier SMG, so they've learned, and we are now finally getting multiple options for each of our, our champion champions, uh, multiple counters for each of our champions in the artifact, and a lot are being stuck to just one sidearm, uh, one anti-barrier sidearm option for half of a year. Uh, SMG versus Pulse Rifle. I think I know which one I'm going to be going with for the entirety of the episode here, and it's not going to be the <laughs> SMG, unfortunately. For the Unstoppable, we have another big range disparity here. We've got Unstoppable Scout and then also Unstoppable Sidearm for the very uh, aggressive players out there. And then our two overload options, Hand Cannon and Sword. Very, very interesting to see Overload Sword come back. But the rest of the artifact seems to be very sword friendly. So, uh, yeah, that's those are your options there. Uh, looks like most of those were going to be 
column one, and then I think is sword column two, if I recall. Yeah, similar to to like when they do rockets and stuff like that, they'll put the heavy option in like column two or three. So that should be pretty easy to unlock uh, if you are doing a little bit of bounty prep going into the final shape. I uh, don't expect to see any champions in the legendary campaign, but I can't speak for the rest of the content. Uh, a few other exotics got a little bit of a, uh, a touch-up or a touchdown, rather reduced splash damage by 10% applied to Sunshot, Trinity Ghoul, Polaris Lance, and Graviton Lance. I don't think this is going to hurt their effectiveness too, too much, but it will be a little bit uh, noticeable, I suppose. Sunshot, of course, will be getting powered down going into the final shape. What a what a season it has had, uh, as, I guess, as well as for Polaris Lance, but uh, those will still be excellent exotic options for GMs and any other kinds of content where you need an exotic primary to really chew through enemies. Court, what is happening to kinetic damage type weapons? Yeah, so they did make a change here, which I think a lot of people have kind of um, misinterpreted here. So kinetic damage type uh, for, for kinetic weapons will no longer deal bonus damage to bosses. Now that's the big keyword here is two bosses. Damage to other combatant tiers is unchanged. So it's going to be the exact same uh, as it is pre-final shape as it will be post-final shape with uh, in regards to many bosses, miners, elites, and champions. So for example here, a kinetic sniper rifle and a stasis sniper rifle of the same subfamily will both deal the same damage to a boss. Champions and many bosses, it's still going to be uh, it's 15% for kinetics and um, uh, kinetic specials and 10% for uh, primaries. Um, but this this change just really highlights just against bosses uh, they are bringing it down a little bit uh, just to give uh, the elemental versions a little bit more of a kind of breathing room uh they are renaming some weapon frames here um just to kind of really consolidate i i have noticed a trend with kind of big expansions or kind of halfway through the year they're they're making a lot of kind of um uh, top level adjustments just to kind of really condense the amount of kind of information overloads uh, so I'm, I'm quite welcome to these changes so they are updating the heavy adaptive and aggressive burst weapon intrinsic names to match burst count across all weapon archetypes uh, functionally they are not changing it's just a name change uh, for when you hover over when you're actually inspecting the 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 the, the, the weapon frame it's it's going to be a, a, a different name it's it's not necessarily a new one but it will be a different name uh, so two bursts it's going to be called heavy burst and this applies to sidearms, hand cannons, and interestingly here, pulse rifles, uh, okay. Uh, three burst adaptive bursts, which is sidearms, LFRs, and adaptive pulse rifles, and four bursts will be renamed to aggressive bursts, and that includes pulse rifles. Uh, they are also removing the foundry names uh, from Vice Rapid Fire, Hacky Precision, and Omalon Adaptive Weapon Intrinsic. So uh, the precision frame Palmyra B is actually called a Hacky Precision Frame. Uh, they're just removing Hacky from it. So it'll still be a Hacky weapon. It'll still have that origin trait. It'll just be called a Precision Rocket Launcher Frame. Uh, we also got a little change here. Uh, low inventory sniper rifles, the minimum reserves have been increased from 14 to 17. It doesn't change the top, the maximum uh, remains the same. Uh, we'll get some more information with that uh, later in the final shape just to see what that will affect. Uh, I don't have any stats here. It's a bit vague in terms of what this is actually applying to, but that's a welcome change. I have actually, no, me personally, I've noticed an uptick of using sniper rifles in a lot of content, especially Succession and the Supremacy. I've been using quite a lot of those. Uh, so that's a nice little welcome change here. Uh, and finally, big one, which uh, I don't think any of us were really expecting here, is that they are changing the blast radius stat to waveframe grenade launchers. That I haven't misspoken mm -hmm. here. It's waveframe. So the, the the way they're, they worded it in this article is that the size of the wave is now affected by the blast radius stat. Uh, this will mostly impact the width of the wave, though the length and the height will also be scaled. Uh, so they gave an example here. The default display stat for blast radius has also been changed from 100 to 50. 
50 will represent the previous baseline. Any stat over 50 will result in a larger wave segment than what was before, uh, what was possible before. Uh, and they have also included a little note here uh, with the, the previously uh, mentioned nerfs to special ammo waveframe grenade launchers. They are reducing the length of the waves from 22 meters to 15, but that does exclude dead messenger. Uh, and of course, uh, chain reaction on waveframe grenade launchers are getting changed for special ammo. Um, uh, they're reducing the potency of that. So I think they're, they're still going to be very good if you've got a really good forbearance from either, um, or well, from uh, Vire of the Disciple or Pantheon or Into the Light. Uh, it's still going to be a very good weapon. It's just going to be less of a like must-have option. Uh, it, again, it puts a little bit more kind of breathing room to uh, to dead messenger which I, I may try and use may see how that performs especially with that being a craftable waveframe grenade launcher same with forbearance and see, just kind of play around with how the blast radius will uh, will kind of affect the the waveframes so yeah that's our kind of big highlights here you lads got any other highlights i did want to just quickly point out that uh, we haven't covered all of the weapon changes here i, I do want to point that uh, notably they didn't mention grenade launchers and rocket launchers they're not getting any damage buff whatsoever because they don't need them <laughs> uh i did see lfr has got i think it was a four five percent yeah five percent <laughs> uh, so which is fine um yeah, that, that's fine. Um, but uh, yeah, you, you lads got any other kind of highlights you wanted to to just pick out before we move on to our next uh, main topic of exotics? Yeah, I would say another thing similar to like the kinetic damage that I think has a little bit of misconception around it is if these weapons are not getting a 7% buff or, or more or around that, it is effectively a nerf by omission. So spec mods are 7.77% repeating, of course. And a lot of the weapons that are getting 7% buffs are, okay, they're losing like 0.78% damage, whatever. That's so negligible. Um, but like LFRs getting a like 2.5% nerf. Uh, what? I really don't, you know, I don't I don't feel like they needed to, I, I feel like they, they deserve that extra like 2%. Um, it's not huge, you know. LFRs had such a long time in the meta that that I kind I I think that they're weary of bringing that back very much. Um, yeah, and then a lot of the other it's just stuff that Court mentioned is is effectively like a seven point eight percent nerf by omission of a buff and the removal of a boss spec mod. Um, I do not think that that is going to shake up the DPS meta a ton. I still think that. GLs and rockets are going to say pretty, you know, much at the top of the meta, despite the fact that they're both receiving equivalently a 7.8% nerf. Um, but yeah, it's definitely interesting to think about. Um, and I'll also say, yeah, you know, scout rifles getting a little bit of a buff against minor enemies. Um, it's kind of nice to see auto rifles getting a little bit of a buff as well. Um, you know, maybe we'll see some Necrochasm, you know, play more now that that's like getting a catalyst and all that stuff, which we can talk about in just a second. Um, and yeah, I would say the other thing I'm, I'm most interested in is Trace Rivals that are getting a buff against, I think it's 20% against Miners and Majors, but no boss change. So it's not going to universal buff like it was for uh, Pulse Rifles or some other stuff like that. But tra Trace Rifles are getting a, a pretty significant buff and um really looking forward to using wave splitter which we've talked about a, a little bit in the past it's like a pretty good weapon and has a really easy way to activate a buff of just picking up an orb is a guaranteed way to get almost like a 70 percent damage buff um and this is already getting like 20 percent against uh quite a few enemy types which is really nice and there is one smg that i would consider using a as far as the anti-barrier goes i is it multi mock? Yeah. Is it multi mock? It's it is man. Amptis is is clocking me right now. He knows what's <laughs> going on here. Multi mock. He's got under over in the third column. In the fourth, it's got frenzy and kinetic tremors. It's like the one thing that could get me to use an SMG to to shoot a barrier champion. Now 
this thing, you know, SMGs, since their, like, range ban normalization, um, are, you know, I want to say you're looking at, like, uh, under 20 meters, you know, 20-ish 20, 20 meters, maybe? I'd have to double check on that, but um, it's not a ton, but in the right GM scenario where it's pretty close quarters and, and stuff like that, I think that there's a chance that it could work. Um, again, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that I'm not coping that the this uh, multi-mock roll that I grinded Iron Banner for last time could potentially have some viability to it. Uh, yeah, and the same thing goes for Wave Splitter. Um, it's just such a cool weapon, and I, I think that... With its ammo economy, if you put it in a pretty good build, a little Jerfalcons or, or anything like that, and um, yeah, I, I think that that also has some solid potential, which I feel like Trace Rifles outside of a few builds and, and you know, Sino Warlocks and stuff have struggled a little bit in, in the past few seasons and have just not really been worth running as a special weapon, and I hope that this change is enough to change that. Um also, for context, like on trace rifles and like how they're going to be outputting damage now, um, these buffs put trace rifles um, pretty much where sidearms are in terms of damage for like a legendary. Um, but instead of like 16 to 18 meters of range, they have like 35 ish meters of range. Um, and then that that is surpassed when it comes to damage against uh, elite enemies. Um, specifically, they're they're dealing damage that is you know around the, the you know Hake two burst uh, from Revision Zero, which is um, very high for context. Um, yeah, they they do be like elite type enemy destroyers. Like if you want to get rid of an elite yeah. really quickly, you swap over to a trace rifle. Um, I will say, okay, so like I don't have a multi Mac. I was just looking at my dim while you were uh, gushing over multi Mac there, but uh, I <laughs> I was too busy uh, farming for uh, Busk of the Tor. <laughs> uh, I don't even have a right. lot, right. dude. Yeah. yeah, that's how little I cared about multi Mac. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Saint will be giving the re review of multi Mac after the final shape because uh, Impetus and I don't have it. <laughs> Speaking of re-review, I did want to talk about the blast radius stat on waveframe mm -hmm. grenade launchers because this change does mm -hmm. does it will change how we review any future uh, waveframe grenade launchers. So I had just pulled up Tusk of the Boar because um, that note about how any stat over fifty blast radius will result in a larger wave segment than what was possible uh, from before. So I immediately went and looked at what of our launcher barrels boost your blast radius problem with looking at this on foundry is they're all listed as a plus zero to the blast radius stat because it was at default 100 so the numerical value they didn't they didn't <laughs> bother to put the numerical value in there so i don't know how much these barrels increase the blast radius because i'm only looking at foundry right now and that's not their fault of course um, but it's volatile launch does give you an increase it says greatly increases blast radius so i'm assuming that's the largest but it also comes with a minus five to the velocity and your handling not great not great uh, next one we have here is confined launch that comes with a massive plus 15 to your stability you don't need that on a, a wave frame and a minus 10 to velocity but also is some increase to blast radius i think that's probably worse than volatile launch i would rather take a minus 5 to velocity and handling and a big increase to blast radius over a huge minus 10 to velocity interestingly though we do have linear compensator which is all pluses it's plus five stability plus five velocity and plus five uh blast radius and the wording here is it's a slight increase so i'm assuming it's probably a plus five to the blast radius again i have no idea how this is going to translate if you're going to even notice with a waveframe grenade launcher with 55 blast radius if it's a, you know, the wave looks different to you what this change is the real confusion for this change for me is actually in our magazine options because uh, for the longest time, we if you can't remember, we only have two. It's high velocity rounds and implosion rounds, and high velocity has always been the pick because of the plus ten to the velocity and reload speed, and those are two very helpful stats. Well, implosion rounds, to make matters worse, has a minus ten to your blast radius, so it has gotten mm. worse with this change because it's now going to take that fifty blast radius that your waveframe starts with and puts it at forty, and then gives you again plus fifteen to stability. You don't need that on a waveframe and a plus 10 to the velocity. 
when high velocity rounds also has a plus 10 to velocity and but then also a plus 10 to your reload speed and no negation to your blast radius so uh, implosion rounds it's gonna have to get reworked because it's it was not a decision beforehand and it's now even less of a non-factor going into the final shape so yeah weird weird change here but uh just something to be mindful of if there are any wave frame grenade launcher special wave frame grenade launchers that drop in the final shape uh, your barrel recommendations are a little bit different now, but the magazine one is staying at high velocity rounds. Cool. Yeah, it's a tough time for implosion rounds. Not, um, <laughs> not looking good. Yeah. You know? All right. Uh, let's move over to exotics. So we're still on the weapons blog post uh, for the final shape. So we'll pick some highlights. There isn't a lot of changes to exotics. Uh, there is also a session here for perks um which we can kind of cover a little bit as well uh, but yeah exotics i'll i'll pick the main one i think which was causing a little bit of a stir because of it being divinity uh, any change to divinity is going to cause uh, some eyebrows and maybe some rage tweets uh, but they are increasing the number of shots required to generate the cage that's the the the, the orb we can um uh, crit cage by 75% against combatants. Um, I don't have the numbers in front of me to kind of gauge how much that is, but it's not 75% is a is a it's a big number, but I think it only like it basically kind of makes tap firing a little bit harder to kind of really keep keep up. Um, but it's honestly not a big change. Um, and their reasoning here is like so they're not changing how effective the cage is or how feathering, that's what they call um, the triggering tapping. of like tapping, yep. yeah. But we are yep. increasing how long it takes to generate the cage, which will be which will make it less ammo efficient and less useful against targets that break aim frequently. So it's a little bit of a kind of user, uh, if you are the Divinity uh, user, it, it will take a little bit to get used to. Uh, but I honestly don't think this will be a major change whatsoever. I think there'll be a little bit more focus on Cenotaph, which we'll talk about later on as well. That is getting changed a, a smidge. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't I don't see a, a major shift here. Uh, nothing else is changing with Divinity. It's still going to be 15%. It's still, uh, it's still got that uh, cage up. It's just going to take a little bit of time for it to activate. Uh, the other one here... Um, which I think all three of us were going to talk about anyway, it was Necrochasm. Uh, so uh, they stated that the ad clear rule wasn't as strong as we'd like, so we buffed it and replaced the Outlaw perk uh, on the Catalyst with a new custom perk that leans into this role. Uh, the Catalyst perk is now called One for All, sorry, One for Thrall, damaging three combatants in quick succession, provides a period of increased damage, range, and aim assist. And the Intrinsic perk now provides increased reload speed after precision kills, They've increased the duration burn applied by the Curse Thrall explosion from 2 to 3.5 seconds to uh, combatants. And yeah, a nice little change. Um, I'm not sh like, I, I really want to try it out. I want to give it a nice uh, like tryout. But because we're also getting uh, the, 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 the OG kinetic uh, auto rifle in the same slot, uh, uh, the name escapes me. Uh, coming in the final shape, new exotic. Oh, Kvostov? Yes, yes. Thank yeah. you. Mm. I I just feel like this like it's a great change, but I'm I want to use the new thing now. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll try and give uh, Necrochasm uh, a fair shake uh, for one one for thrall. Um, that was my two highlights. Uh, divinity and necrochasm uh, saint have you got any uh highlights you want to point out here yeah i there's a couple of things i'd say and I'm, I'm pretty sure right now the div cage activates at like seven or eight shots landed consecutively and if it's seven that would translate to like 12 or 13 and if it's currently eight that would translate to 14 um so it's, I, I think that when you read that change of 75% increase, it sounds so bad, right? That sounds like so Jurassic. But then when you think of the reality of going from like 7 to 12 shots or 8 to 14 shots, uh, it's really not that bad as, as far as like the the overall impact of it goes. Um, 
rocket swapping on div though which is a common practice that i see um in in raid teams and stuff like that i is going away and if anything this will continue to force up the popularity of tractor cannon um tractor cannon is honestly the the kind of default debuff tool that my raid team has shifted over to and i, I think the a lot of, of of people have shifted over to over the past um you know few seasons the only time we're really using div these days is for those harder to hit targets which kind of like Corp was saying um it's gonna just make the tracking a little bit more of a challenge or like you're actually gonna have to track those targets and and be maintaining um you know roll through his like dashes and stuff like that or nezarak especially through his teleports you would be entirely reprocking the bubble at which one i think the tractor is like the easy um easy option there and that will probably continue to push up the popularity of you know some fusion rifles and you know shotgun swaps depending on the boss or like supporting dps basically um for whatever that case may be depending on like the boss that you're on so i definitely think that will continue to push tractor cannon up um yeah i mean i don't know uh, other than that i'm i'm not super fussed about the exotic changes hopefully truth lands pretty well i, I know there's an interview article with the uh, boy chris proctor and he was kind of juicing up truth and i'm i'm really interested about that one i think the most fun change by far definitely sounds like colony um now when colony gets a kill it spawns more colony bots and the number of bots depends on the tier of enemy. Um, if that is strong enough, I feel like it could be really fun and just watch a wave of little tiny robots taking through uh, part of a raid encounter, which would be awesome. I want you guys both to know that I will be bringing truth into the legendary campaign of the final <laughs> shape. That will be in my heavy slot. I will not swap okay. to anything else. One of okay, you will okay. have to use divinity <laughs> if, if it comes to it. But... <laughs> I've waited. I've waited. This tr the <laughs> the reason I'm I'm being weird about this is um one of the exotic ornaments for truth was the first uh, exotic ornament I ever got out of an Eververse engram <laughs> and I was so excited until I found out what weapon this ornament went to and then it was like that <laughs> crushing despair of you got to be kidding me. <laughs> it hit me. So, yeah, I I really want truth to succeed here. Um and I will be so excited to play around with this. I Somebody was using it. One of the content creators that got to play early, I, I remember looking because <laughs> they had a void rocket launcher down in their little uh, arsenal and it had three rockets <laughs> in the back. And I was like, I think they're using truth. Uh, this is going to be really great, though. Um, the one that I wanted to bring up, though, was laments changes, especially in light of the artifact. Mm. <laughs> I should say laments nerf, to be, to be honest here. The reduced healing effect by 20%. And then... The uh, heavy chained attack getting reduced in its damage by 20%. Mm -hmm. Kind of rough, but again, I think, it, it, you know, they probably, it, it is, it is like the Galahorn of swords and that it just does everything and it had, it had no weakness. I mean, the healing effect was really what removed that intended downside as they describe it. So, well, that plus strongholds. I mean, that was that was a very powerful combination that we saw some people using to uh, get their get their way through that final week of Pantheon by tanking a ton of damage from bosses to lock them in place for the rest of the fire team to deal damage during a damage phase. So I'm bummed about it, but uh, yeah, you will probably want to rely a little bit more on some of your adaptive legendary swords to take advantage of, take full advantage of the artifact going into the final shape rather than lament. Two others that I just want to quickly highlight are Ariana's Vow, which is breaking a match shield that's a solar shield, or piercing a barrier's champ uh, barriers. Sorry, a champion's barrier will cause a target to ignite. That's a very fun change. Um, remains to be seen if we'll be taking Ariana's Vow into any kind of type of content, but it does have kind of solar uh, synergy now, uh, which is great. The other one, which actually I'm surprised Saint didn't mention here uh is after uh his namesake's uh or one half of his namesake's name and that is uh bastion um where they have reworked oh, yeah. saint's fist perk dealing damage with a melee increases your charge rate damage and reload speed for a short duration and landing a majority of pellets in a burst increases melee damage so that that's that'll be a very interesting change for for our 
Titan friends, whether you're going to be on Prismatic Titan or any of the other elemental, that's that's a very good change there. Uh, Bastion can be a bit of a sleeper hit because it does hit hard. I think the whole issue with uh, Bastion, since it lost that chip damage like years ago at this point, uh, where it didn't go through, it, basically it caused uh, the, the 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 pellets to go through shields. Um, but they removed that because it was just causing a lot of janky stuff. But uh, they've now reworked the perk to be an actual perk rather than this is a kinetic fusion rifle. It is now uh, this change with uh, increasing your charge rate. So it's a nice little loop between uh, Bastion's fusion rifle aspect and then looping into melee and it loops back into itself. So I think that's a very nice change there. Uh, again, I think that's more kind of, uh, I mean, any subclass or sorry, any class will be able to exploit that but i think for titan friends that'll be a very good choice especially when you've got uh stuff like um well all your melee exotics um uh, knockout being with the prismatic arc um uh aspects and you've got a various amount yeah. of uh uh for the class item exotic you've got some melee based uh, exotic perks in there as well so that's a nice little change for uh, bastion I, again i think something much like we were talking about with the uh uh the uh the changes to uh, i've lost it here uh, yeah kinetic damage type no longer dealing bonus damage to bosses so obviously this will apply to bastion but because this has been kind of been a, kind of glossed over a little bit i feel like people have really glossed over the aspect of um bastion getting a, a really sizable buff here and a nice synergy uh so i'll definitely be taking that into a few activities maybe not the legendary campaign but definitely for just to see how it plays off uh because it is a fun weapon hits hard in a lot of uh places as well yeah and cerberus uh plus one is seemingly on paper capable of doing like bonkers damage after you get a kill and activate its special fire mode so that is not a sentence that i ever thought i would say in my life but i'm gonna i'm gonna be giving Cerberus plus one a try we'll, we'll see how that goes all right so perks here is the last part of this article before we go over to another uh, section related to abilities here. Uh, I'll kick us off here. I'm going to skip ahead and talk about Chill Clip. So as we've known for a while, uh, Chill Clip uh, is still going to be... Uh, so for the final shape, rapid fire fusions will still require three shots to freeze. So we're talking about Riptide specifically. We might get more uh, stasis rapid fire fusions in the future, but this will obviously just specifically related to uh, rip, uh, Riptide here. Slower firing fusions have been unnerfed back to two shots to freeze, and that also applies to all other weapons uh, have also been unnerfed back to two shots to freeze. So uh, your uh, grenade launchers, uh, your rocket launchers, I know one particular grenade launcher, which I was really sad to see got that... Uh, that nerf was lingering dread from duality. I was big mm -hmm. sad to see because I still have my auto loading holster chill clip roll, so I'll be dusting that off for the future. I did want to add some context here, and this comes directly from Rock DC. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, just a little bit of analysis regarding chill clips. So uh, they say that effectively the results are that Riptide and or Orvindil are within a couple frames of each other at 300 milliseconds and 2966.66 milliseconds respectively. Uh, this is in regards to uh, being able to freeze an enemy. Well, Deliverance uh, is about 300, uh, sorry, 300 and 33 to 366 milliseconds faster at 2633.33. Um, if Riptide was still two shots, it would only take 2,000 milliseconds. So you can see the kind of disparities. Went from 2,000 to uh, to 3,000 for Riptide. And Deliverance now appears to be the main one to go for. However, Orvindal is the one that rolls with the reconstruction. If, you can, if, you're, if you've been lucky to get one... Uh, uh, which actually, I, I I lied. I was talking to these guys just before we recorded. I was remembering I didn't get a reconstruction chill clip roll, um, but I did get one a f like last week. 
uh, just randomly popped out of a, a, a gunsmith engram. I was like, oh, I finally got it. Uh, but the reason I'm talking about that is because it gives you more chill clips because you've got that overflowed mag. You'll just keep doing chill clip until you get to the base magazine slash half. Uh, compared to the rest but uh, if you have also lucked out like me with an adept deliverance which will be enhanceable too uh, with demo then you'll be after a more kind of utility focused chill clip fusion rifle so there's a lot of options here i mean chill clip on riptide still going to be very good it's just going to be three shots to freeze if you do have a deliverance i got one here it's got um it's got uh Mass work, charge time. I've got demo. I've got chill clip. Um, be able to enhance that as well uh, in final shape. Be able to put adept charge time. Um, yeah, that's going to be great. Be looking really good. <laughs> chill clip. Mm. Who uh, on on uh, Riptide? Who? <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Yeah, a lot of options. Uh, ultimately, it really comes down to the rules that you got, and it's your per personal preference. I know high impact frames can be really rough to kind of uh, play around with, and I completely respect that. I can be quite. I'm not a big high impact frame in PVE when it comes to uh, you know it's three business days to charge up, uh, but that's uh, if you manage to luck out and get that reconstruction chill clip roll, that's a very good one to keep and to have if you like high impacts. Uh, but Deliverance, if you've been doing a lot of Pantheon like the three of us, uh, and you manage to lock out and get a nice roll of that with uh, Chill Clip, then uh, you'll be doing just fine. Uh, lads, you got any other kind of highlights here? I know in the script we've got a note about Eddie Current. Uh, oh, <laughs> is yeah. That going to it's oh, happening. give it over to Saint now. <laughs> no, it's Saint's Eddie rocking Kurt? into the final shape <laughs> legendary campaign. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's finally a acceptable perk to use on a weapon being amplified will automatically immediately grant the perk to its maximum effectiveness which i believe at this point is um a five percent handling scaler on to its base stat bonus as well as like plus 60 to reload so there's you know, it's at least acceptable to keep a eddy current plus volt shot roll on weapons that you have that you will be using on your art classes, and I am I'm very excited. Um, I don't know if it's going to replace you know some stuff that occupies its current slot, but it's really nice to see that it is going to be a a viable, at least if nothing else, usable trait uh, on on weapons going into the final shape. I've, I've been I've been waiting on this one, boys. We've been we've been stashing in the vault for this one. OK, I'm sorry. What? Uh, I just yeah. searched my dim. I don't have any any current uh, weapons, unfortunately. <laughs> and you shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. You <laughs> Calm we'll down. See. Impetus. Come we'll on. See, now. I got a let's see yeah i definitely have a couple including a combined action with uh eddie current volt shot which we all know that everybody's using 120 rpm aggressive frame hand cannon to pve these days obviously. yeah you're gonna reload that and we'll probably be on the fifth mission of the legendary <laughs> campaign by the time you get bullets back in that chamber <laughs> <laughs> we'll be playing the raid fight and the witness by the time you'll have a volt shot locked I just and loaded on let that. me just get this other mag out of my pocket i just one second <laughs> They, they are adding uh, Eddie Current to um, Symmetry. Uh, we didn't yeah. talk about that earlier, Ooh. but so that is... Oh, okay. Well, for, are you getting that 20% uh, buff, you know? Look, I know Otto, our engineer, audio engineer, he loves Symmetry. Uh, maybe not on PvE, but I know he uses it quite a lot on PvP for kind of longer range maps. And to be honest, I do as well. It's a very fun weapon once you get the... Uh, revolution stacks up um so yeah it, just getting eddie current uh, just attached to it that's that's great i think that would be a nice little change for for symmetry i know people were asking like put volt shot or blind some sort of blind thing uh to symmetry but fair enough uh, I'm, I'm okay with them stacking up but uh we'll, we'll see where eddie current lands in in uh, our future weapons <laughs> Yeah, well, I was going to say, okay, so I look back through, and the only other one I had it on is a Undercurrent, which is a Waveframe GL, and that has Eddie Current Volt Shot. Um, same combo there. So that's interesting. And also, I'm 
with the nurse to chain reaction that are coming that, that you know uh, it's getting like a 20 percent nerf to its damage i believe and a 25 percent nerf to its blast radius its radius of ex- explosion something like that on special weapons at least um i would anticipate that one for all on volt shot becomes slightly more popular on waveframe gls we'll see how that plans out um or, or plays out i should say but I, I definitely think there's more room for one for all in Volt Shot to become popular on Waveframe GLs given that change. I'd agree with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's fair. Uh, all right. We go. Well, uh, we got you know we got a lot of stuff to cover, um, and, we, and we're not even covering every single piece of Final Shape info um, that that has been announced. But let's jump over to some exotic armor discussion. Um, a, a lot of this discussion, I would say, and, and this update is really focused on um, the prismatic subclasses uh, and, and how they're interacting with the rest of our, our sandbox at large, which, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll be talking about abilities in, in just a second as well. We can, we can touch on that. I don't want to completely skip over that. So uh, let's, let's talk about exotic armors um, and, and how they're going to be working with our various subclasses or how they're, they're changing some things to work with our various subclasses. Um, Court, uh, you want to start us off uh, a couple general notes and, and then some Hunter stuff? Yeah, so to ensure compatibility with the uh, Prismatic and the Sandbox at large, instead of Exotic Armor requiring a specific elemental subclass, it'll now be based on Equipped Super Element, Equipped Grenade Element, Equipped Melee Element, or Equipped Weapon Element. So, for example here, Horfrost Z, the Stasis Titan chest plate, requires a Stasis Super instead of just specifically a Stasis subclass for its effects to activate. So, obviously, in Prismatic, you'll have a Stasis Super, uh, so you'll be able to use Horfrost Z in Prismatic. Verity's Brow over on Warlocks requires matching grenade element instead of matching elemental subclass for its effects to activate. Uh, again, this just makes it a lot more open to be used primarily on Prismatic because you, you've got multi-elements here. Uh, but uh, yeah, that, this is the general theme. So this will kind of apply to pretty much anything that's kind of previously been like you had to be on a specific subclass. Now it's specific uh, super grenade, melee, or a weapon element here. They've also changed the harmonic mods uh, to be based on equipped super, and Strand now has synergy with resistance mods. So before, you couldn't pick a a Strand resistance mod, and if you had uh, resistance, uh, harmonic resistance on, it just wouldn't work, uh, because there was like maybe one enemy that could deal strand damage but now that we've got the dread and there's going to be specifically enemies that are applying strand energy towards you uh, as well as stasis uh we'll we'll have that on resistance mods for strand so with this article i actually don't have a lot to talk about um it's maybe for a future episode to talk about exotic armor in in general how how we're feeling about exotic armor i know we talked about that uh maybe this time last year we're just kind of discussing our feelings with how exotic armor are, are kind of vibing with us this change didn't really introduce a lot of things for hunter and two orbs uh up to six and they've got five other guardians doing that you've got other orbs yeah, it just it's a cascade it's a chain an infinite amount of uh, supers being cast here so a bit of a nerf down other than that i don't have much else to say i'll talk about triton vice much later when we're kind of doing a review but uh, uh, no other really big changes that i want to highlight for my fellow titan friend here i know has some uh, some comments to make about some abilities but do you have any uh, exotic highlights you want to put out there saint yeah, I'll just talk. Uh, I'm just pick a couple here that I wanted to talk about briefly. Um, Ursa Furiosa, in addition to its current effect, also provides increased movement speed while guarding with Unbreakable, which is the new void aspect on Prismatic, and then also grants super energy for guarding with Unbreakable. Energy scales based on the amount of incoming damage the shield absorbs. Um, 
with some sandbox changes that we will talk about in just a minute coming up, I actually think that there's a chance that Ursa Titans become more popular again uh, after the first time in a long time, depending on the environment that you're in and how important your damage resistance and invulnerability is. It could be pretty popular. Um, yeah, there's a lot of other small changes um, that I just are, are nice. Like Armamentarium gets firepower built in. Uh, still don't think that that's going to be a super popular exotic just because of the benefit that it provides is not quite strong enough. Synthos is getting a small nerf, um, surrounded lingers for five seconds instead of eight. Um, Severance Enclosure is also getting a small nerf till it's like knockback effect. Uh, and then you also have to have a line of sight on the enemies just in, instead of them being in a radius. And the last one I want to talk about is Kepri's Horn. Increase the damage from the Solar Blast by 100% in PvE. Solar Blast now scorches each time it hits its target instead of scorching only once. Um, and um, the benefits from Ember of Eruption and Ember of Ashes, uh, you know, also can be applied to that, which is plus 30 scorch in PvE and, and 15 in PvP. Um, I really do admire the Exotic Armors team just determination to make Kepri's Horn happen. I really do appreciate that, and and I will continue to try it out every time that it gets a buff. We'll see how it lands, but nevertheless, I'll definitely be trying that out. And also, if you have not tried Severance Enclosure since it's got its kind of major rework recently, um, you really should do that. It's ridiculous and very fun to use. Uh, it's not maybe like the most meta or effective thing ever, but even after this nerf, I still anticipate it's going to be a, a fun and like goofy exotic to use and would recommend it if you want to just mix it up a little bit from your typical Titan Mayway exotics. Uh, I'm just, what, what's going on with the Warlocks? Any any changes of note that you want to talk about here? Let's see. Sunbracers got, bracked, bought, blah, 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 blah. Sunbracers got brought back down to earth. That's what I was trying to say. Still going to be viable, though. They didn't go full Starfire protocol on it, which is nice to see. So the increased solar grenade duration has been reduced from 4 seconds to 2 seconds. And the grenade recharge rate, has uh, that increase has been reduced, uh, which will allow a max of 4 grenades while the effect is active down from 5. So you're losing out on one additional solar grenade to cover that battlefield and deprive kills from your teammates when they're just trying to do their bounties and what have you. So still going to be fun, still going to be viable next time we have a solar heavy um, episode artifact. Verity's Brow no longer requires that matching subclass element, and you now just have to match your grenades element to get the bonuses for your matching weapon. Awesome. I think this is going to hopefully get a lot more people onto Verity's Brow. It's a wonderful exotic. It's flown under the radar, but it is very, very strong, especially in low man content. Um, one thing I did want to bring up was uh, Mantle Battle Harmony. I, I know some people have been asking, we've got a few patrons and other people in the Discord asking us kind of what are our, what are our picks for a prismatic build going into the final shape. And while we're kind of waiting to actually get our hands on that stuff before we put a build build together, I'm very curious to try Mantle of Battle Harmony on Prismatic. Uh, it's got a change recently, which is what it's put it, uh, put it on uh, people's radar. So it now grants super energy ranging from between 1.5% to 4.5% based on the combatant rank, where the higher ranked enemies grant more super and it has removed that two second cooldown. I think this could be really strong again. Don't want to make any promises. Don't want to get anyone's hopes up. But this is this is definitely an exotic that I will be curious to try on that and Verity's Brow on on Prismatic Warlock. I think are going to be really really interesting. But uh, yeah, I've not used Mantle Battle Harmony ever, um, not in PVE at least. I know some people had used it in PVP to uh, abuse those supers a long long ago. But yeah, I'm very curious to see how this stacks up for uh, for Prismatic. So those are kind of the two that I wanted to talk about, plus Sunbracers. Cenotaph got, got nerfed in a correspondingly appropriate way. You can't stack Cenotaph user, users anymore. And the the target lock visual marker is now hidden from the Warlock, which I find to be very funny. Um, yeah. So I guess I'll just be calling out to Court and Saint to make sure that I tagged the right person. Okay. Silly, silly change, but hey, if that's how we balance it, that's how we balance it, right? <laughs> That's such a strange change. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really, of all this stuff, that one is so weird to me. 
Yeah, you get one very obvious, like, yes, probably should not be stacking Cenotaph Mass right, Users. Right. That would probably throw a lot of balance <laughs> out the window when everyone gets infinite heavy ammo. Um, mm. Target lock visual marker, sure. All right. A reason to talk to my to talk to my LFG teammates now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say so. Just talking at like the, the the top of this section in regards to like uh, prismatic and the compatibility specifically for mental battle har- harmony. This is one example where before uh, you had to use s- subclass matching weapon kills to to proc its effects. Now it's going to be uh, specifically related to the element of the super. So again, if you're on Prismatic, if you're on uh, Stasis Warlock, uh, sorry, a Stasis Super on Prismatic Warlock, and you use something like Agar Scepter, I know a few folks have been kind of suggesting that kind of pairing, and you're going to proc the the super energy, and you know, uh, something like um, uh, Agar Scepter completely wrecks uh, add dense combatant so you'll be able to get your 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 stasis uh super up really fast but uh, just gonna be a lot of options there it's be very interesting uh i i had my eyes on about uh mantle of Bar- battle harmony that's uh, a very interesting change see how that plays definitely take a look at all of your solar weapons um because of course our new solar super will be in prismatic all of the new light supers will be in prismatic as well but for warlock specifically in mantle battle of harmony look at uh solar weapons to combine with song of flame because i think that could be a very interesting uh combination there all right uh i'm looking through the list here we've got just some kind of one-off stuff raid armor mods will no longer have energy costs awesome so they're going to be free to slot into raid specific armor i think that will apply to about five people that listen to this podcast congratulations guys <laughs> go crazy uh am- ammo finder update finder mods will be more predictable they will progress their progress through an uh towards an ammo brick through death so it uh, that will be nice at least for heavy and special ammo finder mods and let's see exotic artifice upgrades how <laughs> how are we feeling oh, about yeah. that one i forgot about that that flew under the radar for me that's gonna be fun oh wait hold on one exotic cypher and 10k glimmer never mind that's <laughs> oh, expensive geez. it's yeah. gonna be expensive so it's like a post tier 10 masterwork yeah. additional upgrade to give your exotic armor a, a, an artifice slot right i mean i think uh was it around about witch queen time i was saying oh we should probably get like exotic artifice upgrades and i was thinking it's probably going to be pretty expensive and yeah this is quite expensive so um you know us as veteran uh players to destiny we don't use exotic ciphers a lot uh so like we're, we're how many can you hold to... of those well at the five. moment one. Oh, is it five i thought it was still yeah. one right yeah. okay they oh okay. god okay um so yeah it's gonna be quite expensive there um but uh I, i'm willing to do it I, i'm not sure what exotic i'm going to use <laughs> i'm on. looking through my list right now <laughs> <laughs> um i'm going oh, to maybe so wait a many. little bit <laughs> Maybe well, yeah, all my exotic ciphers are going to upgrade Rahul in the beginning of the expansion. Yeah, let's that's, be clear, right? Yep. Mm, true, true. Okay. So there you go. Um, let's see. Powered melee and armor effects. So that's getting updated. That's just a terminology update there. So uh, you have to spend a melee charge or a finisher um, in a few places to uh, to actually prompt that effect that's tied to it. So this is just what? Is it? Oh, this is just requiring the power of melee. Gotcha, as opposed to the the uncharged melee. So, yeah. So, I initially I was quite confused with this, specifically how it paired with Assassin's Cow and Combination Blow. I so I know about Knockout being uh, so all the sort of Titan um, aspects that like are that play into the whole uh, changes your melee into a powered melee. So Knockout is one of them um, where once knockout is active your melees turn into an arc powered melee uh, during the duration uh, it was the same thing for combination blow and hunters hunters don't have that kind of same effect but i i wasn't aware that combination blow did actually do it so every time combination blow was active uh, and you use something like assassin's cowl 
uh, it wouldn't spend the melee charge. It would still consider that melee, while combination blow was active, to be a combination blow powered melee. What's happening here is they're removing that functionality. You have to actually spend the melee charge for uh, Assassin's Kill to work. It doesn't affect, if you use it the way I've been using it, where you, you melee, you get combination blow to, to, to uh, activate, uh, and you melee them down with your powered melee, you consume the melee, and then you dodge to get your melee back. That's not changing. That's that's not the thing that's changing here. It's just if you were to use your... Um, if your, your, your powered melee was already spent and you were to use combination blow and a melee again, it would count as a powered melee again. Uh, but that's that's changing. That's being removed. And it's going to be the same for Severance Enclosure, for our, war, uh, sorry, our Titan friends here. Uh, so mm -hmm. Knockout was the one that I was thinking of. So that's getting a big... Uh, that's more kind of applicable to Titans because they've got a bunch of aspects across all elements that, are, that basically changes your uh, melee into a kind of pseudo- a powered melee uh if you've got uh those things active knockout um i think it was uh hammer or sorry not hammer roaring flames is the other one for solar uh i think void's got um let's see here uh offensive bulwark uh so all those will get uh, uh changed up for severance enclosure uh and th they were saying so this is the start of it uh, and they're going to work through a bunch of the the, the other kind of exotics just to kind of really pin down these things because they do get a bit wild it gets quite uh, insane Espe again especially I'm, I'm not trying to highlight uh, like put, put you out uh, and really highlight you specifically the titan here saint but uh, it, it can get a bit manic uh, with uh, oh yeah uh, free severance <laughs> enclosure explosions and everything's going everywhere in the room I'm like what's going on saint what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> oh I propped knockout once and i'm just causing explosions i'm just uh, <laughs> punching everything obviously yeah what, what else is there to do you know yeah well how about that uh anything else for the armor stuff kind of a, a weird article i won't lie did not expect a lot of these choices there were a few that i thought was were going to get looked at a little bit or at all and didn't so uh don't worry master the quiet one i have not forgotten about you Okay, someday. I'm going to spend my first someday. Exotic Cypher and 10k Glimmer boosting my Mask of the Quiet one. It's going to be my good luck charm <laughs> to make sure that, that gets... Uh, that'll be my first Artifice Exotic. <laughs> <laughs> Poor anyway. thing, man. Oh, gosh. Let's move on All to right. abilities. Yes. Our last topic before our reviews here. Um, I'll kick us off here. Just a big kind of highlights... Um, so stasis is the big highlight here to talk about. I think we'll 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 definitely get into a little bit more specific uh, uh, breakdowns later into uh, the final shape expansion. A few episodes, then we'll we'll, we'll really start digging into how stasis uh, works. But just on the top level, they're adding in the frost armor keyword. Um, so you're fortified by layers of durable stasis matter, reducing incoming damage. Frost armor damage resistance grows stronger as you gain additional stacks and it reduces damage from PvE combatants by 4.5% per stack. And for enemy players, it's 2% per stack. Um, so it, can, it goes up to 5 for, and it lasts for 9 seconds. But the reworked Whisper of Rhyme fra Fragment, it uh, increases the duration up to 13 seconds and a maximum of eight stacks. Uh, so that'll give, at eight stacks, uh, should give a damage uh, reduction of um, 36%. So it's a little bit less than Void Overshields, uh, a little bit less of what it was. The Stasis Overshield was also 50%, uh, but I think they're playing into the whole fact that because uh, you're layering more stasis matter on and you can keep refreshing it it's a little bit more of a kind of um uh, it's more user friendly it's more pr uh, kind of re uh, proactive when it comes to applying itself refreshing itself compared to something like void overshield where you, you might need to do something a little bit more specific uh this is a little bit more kind of open to just applying any amount of stasis uh, uh frost armor towards yourself um so yeah, Whisper of Rhyme will no longer grant a stasis 
shard overshield when collecting a stasis shard and it now increases the maximum duration and stat count uh they're buffing all the um or sorry they're adding this behavior to uh, frost armor to all the um harvest as aspects so for grim harvest for hunters uh tectonic for um titans and glacier glacial for uh warlocks uh, the stasis shards grant a small amount of health and a stack of frost armor and for hunters who can get the large stasis shard from grim harvest that grants more health and more frost armor stacks um i've already talked about renewal grasp balladors wrath weavers is also getting some synergy with frost armor uh we're getting uh was it two more um whisper fragments um i'm only seeing one here i know they talked about another one later on um oh no I'm, I'm thinking of a rework but whisper of chill is the uh, the new fragment here stasis weapon final blows have a chance to create a stasis shard and uh they've reworked whisper of change which was the one that just gave you a flat dr uh when you were standing near a stasis crystal or a frozen target now grants a chance to create a stasis shard when defeating a target while you have one or more stacks of frost armor so they're really opening up the the, the whole issue that i personally had with uh with uh, stasis shards but it was very uh, focused on you had to have one aspect and that was a wicked implement and full tracer could also uh grant you stasis shards uh but they'll, they'll still obviously give you that uh but now you will have a lot more opportunities to, to to spawn them specifically for hunter i'll talk about um for stasis and i'll quickly briefly talk about the other elements here uh, some nice changes in regards to uh, Silence the Skull getting a damage buff uh, by 40% and they're bringing the um, so the Skull Storm now slows down when any target is within its area of effect to reduce instances where it could overshoot its target. I definitely felt that one. There was a few times where I'd see uh, the Skull Storm just doing its own thing and not really freezing stuff. It just became a bit pointless. Um, mm. But uh, nice change there. Um, for the other elements, I'm going to skip over the the talk topic about Well of Radiance and Warden Dawn because I'll give that over to my fellow guardians here. But real quickly for the other elements, Arc Staff's getting some blinding synergy. Uh, they've decreased the base cooldown for Disorienting Blow from 100 to 90 seconds, which is nice. Um, other, I know I've been using a lot of solar recently, so. That's got some... The one thing I wanted to point out... Yeah, this is the one here. It was knock them down. Reduce the internal cooldown of throw, on throwing knife refund from 1 second to 0 0.2 seconds. That always caught me out. I would always throw my knife after I got it refunded. And it would be within that 1 second I would not get the refund. And it was very frustrating because I'm like, Oh no, I should be getting it back. But uh, that was a nice little refund thing. Another discussion here about the reduce the strength of orb of power uh, created on precision hit on marksman golden gun. Uh, a lot of reductions here. Already talked about it with starter scales. So there's a lot of uh, kind of that's being put to put, put to bed. The whole spamming supers. Um, I don't have anything else to talk about in regards to strand, but for void, I want to highlight snare bomb. Increase the linger duration of smoke after detonation from three to five seconds. And also, they've added kind of that, um, the old, um, uh, that sort of damage over time poison effect that was on Void 2.0's Smoke Bomb. And it, they've added that into Snare Bomb. Uh, and they've uh, also kind of done a lot of uh, uh, above towards Trapper's Ambush. Uh, it applies snare bombs damage over time to enemies caught in its smoke. That was one thing that really annoyed me. It was like, I've used my smoke bomb and it just completely disappears. It doesn't give me any benefit. Um, so that's now getting that synergy. Uh, it's got uh, the linger effect is now higher. And lastly, I'll talk about here is Stylus Executioner. The weaken effect now is applied by glaive melee attacks as well as normal melee attacks. So that's a nice little change because uh, I am looking at Triton Vice. Uh, for for a little bit uh, some some fun and games in uh, in final shape so uh, stylus executioner is on prismatic for hunters so be some fun games there but uh, that's all I've got here in terms of 
abilities. Again, we'll talk about stasis stuff uh, a little bit later into the final shape, but I do want to give my fellow Warlock and Titan some time to discuss and share their thoughts about Well Arrhenius and Word of Dawn. It's over. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Well of Radiance is fine. Uh, it's, again, getting a nerf. We were told about this all the way back in November. Um, and looking at it, it will be noticeable. I, I'm sure that it's it's going to be a rough adjustment for a bit, but I, I don't think this is going to decrease the popularity of well of radiance even though that might be what these changes were hoping to do um i'm sure that song of flame will be of of interest kind of right at the launch of witch queen i witch queen goodness the final shape but i do fear that long-term well of radiance will probably bounce back um there's just yeah there's just too many encounters out there where it, it you can get away with the well of radiance or having a well of radiance down can can make it so that you can focus on other things for the purposes of farming or going through content quicker um yeah again i was kind of i figured there might have been also a change to phoenix protocol uh to be paired alongside the nerf to well of radiance to really push players beyond well of radiance but there wasn't in the armor changes, so I, I still think it will be the case that we'll end up just stacking more wells. Uh, we saw that during Crota. You know, one well was not enough. Crota smashed it quite easily. So what do we do? We just swap to even more wells and spam wells during the damage phase, and that's <laughs> how you can overcome Crota. Like, we're, we're too tied to it. But anyways, let's get into the Well of Radiance changes here. So the new Well of Radiance will grant Radiant for eight seconds when players exit the well of radiance area so that should make it a much larger space where you can get the radiant effect and then of course they reduced player survivability while you are standing in the well healing per second has been reduced from 100 to 50 health points that matches restoration times two i think that's you know that's fine bring it in line with restoration times two i understand that increased heal on cast from 40 to 300 health points so this will be again people did use well of radiance as a panic button i've been playing a lot of onslaught i see them all the time so this will make it the absolute best panic button in the game now uh <laughs> 300 health points is fantastic and then reduced damage resistance versus non-boss combatants from 40 percent to 20 percent cut it right in half and then reduced damage resistance versus boss combatants from 40% to 10%. That is going to be the big change right there. We are going to get smoked by the witness in a well of radiance. Damage resistance versus enemy players is unchanged. So, ooh, sorry PvP players, it is still going to be a problem in trials. Additionally, the uh, maximum orbs of power from defeating targets while in your Will of Radiance has been increased from four to five. So there we go. More orbs of power for everyone. Again, I think during the uh, versus boss combatants, Will of Radiance will feel weaker. You are going to get destroyed. I can imagine if we fight any bosses that come into the Will of Radiance like Rolk or Nezarak, that is where you are going to realize just how overpowered you are going to be against those enemies. But for targets where you can sit at a distance, throw down the well, and you don't have to worry about them coming into the well and really messing you up up close, I I don't know. I really don't know. Again, there will probably be... Yeah, I'm trying to think of like playstyle changes here. It may be the case that uh, the warlock that places a well down maybe throws a healing grenade down kind of halfway through the, life sp the lifespan of a well of Radiance from now on. Uh, that increased heal on cast will be really helpful for the person casting it, but the healing per second plus that reduced damage resistance uh, is just... I don't know. It'll be interesting, but it's a weaker well of Radiance. I, I can definitely tell you that, so... We'll see. I'm not counting too much on Well of Radiance going into the raid, going into our future dungeons for the year of the final shape, but uh, I'm sure it will still have a use case in a lot of our existing content. All right, that's enough from me. Saint, what is happening to Ward of Dawn? A lot. And uh, <laughs> not a lot of it's good. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that much. I don't... Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of changes in this article that I was pretty positive on. Um, you know, some art changes that look pretty good, the, you know, consecration changes that, that look to make that ability even more fun and, and great to use. Um, and that's all really nice. But unfortunately, there's something kind of looming over here. Yeah, and that is the Word of Dawn changes. So 
I'm going to try to go through this succinctly and then give my thoughts like right afterwards. Armor of Light is not an overshield anymore, but it's DR that gets applied to you while you're in the bubble. When you are in the bubble, you immediately get a full void overshield, but it's just the one, and you, you can't stack them up anymore, which is something that was super popular, like in Trials. Um, and it gives you like 60% versus uh you know enemy combatants so that's great that that's pretty much the same while you're in the bubble um when you step out of the bubble though there are also some additional changes when you're near the word of dawn you now have void over shield that gets trickled onto your character over time uh in a in a, a similar rate to when you're sitting behind a bastion barricade and the bubble also no longer provides weapons of light that has been moved to the helmet C14. Um, and if you are the person that is casting the word of dawn, you can now generate more ores by defeating enemies with melee attacks that are nearby or in the ward. Okay. Well, Irradiance is getting uh, big, massive reworks, and, and that's fine. And part of me thought, oh, well, maybe they'll say that if you want something similar, you now have to double down and expend two supers on this, you know, kind of like stationary defensive, um, you know, play if you want that to be the case. But uh doesn't really feel like that's what's happening. It, it feels like a lot of this is getting taken down a notch because of Bubbles' impact in Trials and in PvP in general, which... I mean, I get it, and the current state and nature of Trials is just run the absolute lowest possible cooldown supers, and then if you play a game that even goes long enough to get one, maybe you'll get one, and you can use that to win a round, especially with the way that Trials cap points work and all that stuff, and it's a problem. I, I'm, I am empathetic to that. What is frustrating is that I look at all these changes, and I think, why would I possibly throw down a bubble when all the bubble is going to give me is over shield. And it even says at a similar rate as standing behind a barricade. So, um, if I were to just turn around and put a rally barricade kind of on the backside of the bubble, which is already like a, a common practice, uh, when you're not using something like loot of factions, um, you can just get that same over shield that you would be getting from a bubble right next to you. Uh, and then this is what kind of makes me think that like, oh, maybe, um, Ursa's will become more popular because bubble definitely can't do what, you know, people would be thinking as far as the terms of like, just providing a bunch of DR at the same time. Um, when, when a barricade could, could effectively do that. Uh, and I think of a scenario in which, you know, somebody puts a well down, uh, or somebody rather than a well, somebody casts a, um, you know, your, your Ursa's super and just sits there and blocks is giving everybody a 40% damage buff, which five players with a 40% damage buff is about a 7% loss versus six players with a 25% buff. So not a, not a huge discrepancy there, but it is something when it comes to like those really pushed scenarios, like, uh, contest modes and things like that. And then you could put a well down and put a barricade behind it and be getting an over shield continuously dripped onto your character from the bastion barricade. Um, and I still have no reason to use bubble, and pve and now if i want bubble to be good on a on a mobile basis um i have to use helm of state 14 which well now gets for free when you leave the well you get radiance but bubble requires you to use an exotic armor piece make it make sense um on that one i i mean like a lot of the dr nerfs and stuff like that i get but the fact that you can just get radiance when you leave the well now and bubble requires you to use helm of state 14 is not that is like the one that really does not make sense to me um, and just seems like a, just an outright nerf to an, something that already was never used in PvE. And yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that. I, you know, a little bubble rant over. I just want bubble to be viable in PvE. Uh, we'll see how that all plays out. I think it's an even like, it's more of a kicker because we Weapons of Light, specifically on bubble, is 25% and it used to be a higher buff it used to be 35%. So like it, it that's what doesn't make a lot of sense for me either like it it's if you want to keep mm. that 25% with uh with weapons of light you have to have the titan also using helm of say f 14 to have the exact same buff that I could just literally throw out my solar knives to get myself radiant mm -hmm. for 
a couple seconds. Yeah, Weapons of Light does last longer, um, but like Well of Radiance just gives it for the same plus more time anyway. And yeah, as you said, it, it gives you it um, if you leave the well. Like that, that was a very interesting change. I was not expecting that for Well of Radiance, where if you left the well, you get to keep Radiant for a few seconds and you can keep refreshing it. Like that's a fantastic change. Like I'm absolutely like thumbs up to the well of radiance change. Like that's some really great change. We got a nice like okay, we're we're we are nerfing this, but we're also buffing it. We're going to make it so you don't all have to be inside the well to to get the the damage bonus. And I was like, oh okay, that was fair enough. This is a really great change. Like uh, this is very positive. Yeah. And then when you scroll down and you read Ward of Dawn, it's like oh, could, like could this not have been replicates like if anything the the well of well of radiance has inherited what ward of dawn used to do where you yeah i don't understand it you you don't you keep uh, weapons alive so this is the the one thing that i would get is if you put ward of dawn down and you got void over shield at double the rate at which you good at, mm. at which you did from bastion barricade while standing near it oh well now i have a pretty good reason to put a bubble behind the well and it'd and be doubling up on that in during a, a very tense cps phase but yeah i think you use your class ability <laughs> yeah yeah i mean bastion basically kind of gives you the same effects um which will kind of bring everyone else back into that kind of Maybe not the same range as before, but similar range. If you're in a well, the Titan pops his void, Bastion Barricade. Everyone's got a void over shield. They've got the 10% against bosses uh, in Well of Radiance. And they're basically, you know, we're back into some nice territory to really enhance it. I think they've they've been quite consistent in the fact, okay, we don't want to have all these DR bonuses with just one thing. But if you build into it, then fair enough. We're, we're okay with that. But this change to, to Bubble was just... Uh, yeah like everything else in this article we we all obviously don't have time to talk about everything but there's some really yeah. great changes in here and specifically curated towards um uh curated towards uh, prismatic well the radiance yeah. and word of dawn are not part of the prismatic sandbox at least not currently uh Maybe we'll see these in the future attached to prismatic, but they're not uh anytime soon um but this like i'm not a big titan player i've made that quite clear when when we've been doing these uh, podcasts but even i'm just like what what is this change <laughs> like it's just such a strange change and like maybe helm of saint 14 will be really good now that it's got a bunch of bonuses and what wasn't clear to me is the protective shield from edge of action also getting weapons of light uh mm-hmm. i'm not sure if that's going to be uh, applied because all the other benefits that you get with Helm of Saint 14, the bubble benefits also benefit the protective shield, the, the gumdrop shield uh, from Edge of Action. But uh, that wasn't clear to me. But yeah, I, I feel yeah. for my my Titan um, siblings. Well, you know, I want to I want to cap this off with the with a few positive points. You know, I don't want to just totally dog because, like Court said, there's a lot of good stuff in here, and and I will round this off with saying um they massively buffed shield throw which is something that i have been hoping to see for a long time and i'm very grateful for that it's like 20 percent damage buff there's buffs to the way that it ricochets um its duration is increased and all that stuff um and then even offensive bulwark now is going to see a slight buff uh, you know kind of in combination with that and that is going to allow um doom fangs uh second chance and just anything else that is related to shield throw a, a little bit more um just life and viability and i am very excited about that which is an, another a different aspect of void that i have felt is, is pretty weak for a while now and I'm, I'm very excited to see getting buffed up i'm excited to see consecration getting a big buff there i mean i oh, yeah i don't think it really needed anything but uh, that is one aspect that prismatic titans will have access to is consecration and you'll be able to pair that with your other elemental uh, uh aspects like diamond lance and uh, knockout um but uh that that was fun to see um titans really now have out. a cooler shatter dive than hunters <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but yeah that that was yeah i i don't yeah i also don't want to dog on the word of dawn change it's f- pretty disappointing to see but 
yeah, the, the, the other changes that we see here, again, a lot of these are created towards Prismatic anyway. Um, we're seeing some really decent like buffs and like I love consecration. I think that's such a like it's such a Titan thing uh, that really plays into their identity and getting a, a big buff here. Uh, it's going to be part of the Prismatic sandbox as well. Can't wait. Absolutely, absolutely. Hey, good thing, good thing we got Twilight Arsenal coming, right, Saint? <laughs> oh yeah. At least you got a Void Super that won't let you down coming in the final shape. Mm-hmm. Are Which, you looking forward I to mean, that, Saint? <laughs> Early projections, uh, I am looking for being able to throw a <laughs> massive axe <laughs> that yeah, weakens, that weakens. That's weakens, huge, yeah. right mm-hmm. there. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm speculative, you know, but tentatively, I'm pretty juiced on Twilight Arsenal, mm. to be honest with you guys. Yeah, uh, we get to use them as well, uh, as, as yeah. allies. Just a mm-hmm. fire, t- it'll be us playing the Legend campaign, just throwing axes <laughs> everywhere, <laughs> firing truth, throwing giant axes at enemies. <laughs> me, and, yeah. me and my boys, and some big axes, you know. <laughs> All right, lads. All right, uh, any other highlights here, uh, in the abilities tab before or sorry, blog post before we uh kind of move over? I think really the, the big highlight is that we will return to a lot of these changes, specifically stasis. I think that's I really want to like give it a, a good shake in the final shape um i know we're going to be playing a lot of prismatic but i think stasis is my like second option if i really need to like use a specific subclass uh, just because there's a lot of buffs in here there's a lot of overhauls and yeah i think a few episodes in we should uh, return and really properly break down a lot of these things uh, for stasis uh, and the other elements as well there's some really great changes yeah, I mean, there's so many of these things, like, we buffed it because of Prismatic, like Squirm Grenade for the Hunter Prismatic kit. Like, I don't have a comment on that because I haven't played with it in Prismatic, but that'll be something we can touch on, of course. Um, yeah, so Pocket Singularity for Warlocks, to use an example there, um, getting a big buff, 50%. I'm sure that's going to be awesome, but, you know, in the context of Prismatic kit, come final shape, how does that play out? You know, we'll, we'll touch on that later, but... Let's uh let's pivot and look backwards on season twenty three, our final season, and then the year of lightfall, as contentious as that has been. Um Court story of season twenty three. What were your thoughts on Riven? Getting to talk to Riven properly this time without uh without having to do a raid to hear her sweet, sweet voice. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. It was fun to hear. Uh, I, I mean, it's been such a long time since we've actually done the uh, the, the narrative arc. Cause that was done basically back in like December, January time, and we're now in June. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I think it was an interesting story. Um, hearing from Riven and just, you know, she's being so just her usual self of... Uh, I can help you, and it's that kind of monkey paw situation of I can help you out here, but uh, you know I'm going to need to get some something in return. Uh, but also, like that cutscene with her, uh, her backstory, and also her mate Tyrannus was very interesting. I I love seeing that cutscene. I I recently rewatched it. It was a very like I love those those kind of artistic cutscenes for anything that we've ever had. Um, like that if Destiny was ever to do like an animated series I would love it to be in that art style but uh, yeah that cutscene was really good love to hear the music I love hearing like backstory for all these characters that have been very important in our Guardian's journey and yeah I mean obviously this was the whole setup to get us into uh, the portal into the the Pale Heart Uh, we sent uh, Crow uh, using one last wish with the uh, Riven, send him into the portal to establish a link to allow us to follow. And we'll also be playing into that, um, well, by the time this episode comes out. So um, I, I, in terms of narratively, I think it's not the strongest uh, arc that we've had. Um, I still found it interesting. Uh, the, the more interesting parts of the season 23 were definitely the gameplay loops, but uh, we'll get in that on a, in a second here. Um, Saint, what, what's your, uh, what was your thoughts? What's your vibes with the narrative with uh, Riven and Season of the Wish? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm interested in it because, or I, I enjoyed it because it capped off such a long thread 
Um, and I do enjoy the, the, you know, the kind of the long-term story thread payoffs and also the potential that it, it opened up at the same time. So it managed to like cap off kind of like the 15th wish, you know, and all this stuff in a relatively satisfying way. Well, now that the, you know, the story of like Starcross and all that stuff that you were talking about kind of leaves the door open for, you know, these Ankara eggs that are just scattered around out in the world and what is to become of them over time and how that remains unseen I, I think is definitely something that we will see come up um you know maybe not for a while but i i definitely think that that is is coming back at some point um even if it is um you know five episodes six episodes from now or, or something like that um and you know it's a crow's cap off uh, you know, kind of cutscene there, the, the very, the very ending cutscene, and, and the way that he um is interacting with his fellow hunter. I really laughed at the fact that they're all both like missing all of their shots as they confront each other. I'm not gonna lie, that did kind of get me a little bit. He's just like spamming his hand cannon, and nothing is hitting. Yeah, um, I, I, zero I, stacks I, of paracostal <laughs> right there, dude. Yeah, yeah. not a, dude, like, not a one. Okay, <laughs> last time I used Hawkwood and Ace of Spades, they landed their shots. Like, what, what, what's going on yeah. here? <laughs> yeah, that was maybe that was supposed to be like choice, they but... met their equal kind of a thing. Uh, I don't know, but we should have sent somebody yeah. better. I'm gonna say it. <laughs> <laughs> Get Osiris in there, dude. I don't care if he doesn't have a ghost. He'd take care of it. I trust no, him. Oh, not Osiris. No, no, no. Saint, Osiris. Saint 14, get him in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah, punch yeah. him in the <laughs> Oh, dude. Um, yeah. Overall, pretty satisfied. I. You know, kind of also talking about the activities a little bit. I thought that the coil was great until we got onslaught, and then I was like, "Oh, this is this is really what I wanted." Uh, but still, coil um, definitely an all time seasonal activity. Um, really, yeah. I mean, I loved it. I, I mean, we all I think we all enjoyed it, and um, I, I'm hoping that they will continue to to build on what they've like learned from deep dives and the coil and and all this other stuff. I agree. I agree. Yeah, I have no idea what the episode activity structure is going to look like, the gameplay loop, if you will. It's going to be going on for a lot longer. So, yeah, who who knows what how they're going to structure it. But um, they went out on a high note for the seasonal activity. I think Koyo is definitely top five for me. Um, Starcrossed, uh, definitely bottom five of the exotic missions for me. That was not fun to play at all. But, um, yeah. You know, garden aesthetic is is beautiful. I can see why people fall in love with that space so much. And um, yeah, it, good good activity. Again, it, I think it helps also that there was good stuff to chase within the activity. That it was very rewarding at the higher levels, getting all the crafting materials at the very end from those extra chests and the platinum uh, score of the coil was a nice touch as well. So yeah, I, I really and of course having not just the seasonal weapons dropping, but also the reprised Dreaming City weapons, even though some of those aren't quite as um, desirable, was still nice to have extra options dropping. I, you know, there were a few things that I was looking for, like Vouchsafe and Tiger Spite. Uh, Twilight Oath had some interesting roles I wanted to get. So, you know, getting those to drop was helpful as well. Yeah, and for a lot of people, it's the first time they've got Dreaming City weapons that are viable. Uh, they may have got True. some of the classic ones. Uh, if they've played since um, Forsaken, but um, yeah, for a lot of people, this will be their first Tiger Spike or uh, Waking Vigil. I actually did get a nice Waking Vigil, which uh, you know, it's it's just a, an arc hand cannon. I've got better options like Nation of Beasts or Posterity, um, but the one that I did get um, that I have been using was I think it was a Volt Shot one, uh, and the other one was also a Dragonfly. Um, so it's just a nice one just to take into kind of, you know, your low end content. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was nice to get that. I, I, I loved using Wake and Vigil back in the day. Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of these aren't viable. Uh, if you've got stuff like Scatter Signal or Appetence or Doom Petitioner, um, we also How got about those weapons? weapons. Holy cow, oh, those were strong. Wish weapons? Yeah. Yeah. Some, some of the best that we've had, um, uh, in a seasonal structure, um, mm. I, I 
honestly, all all six of these, even the bow, I haven't used the bow a lot, but all all six of these are just great, solid weapons. Scatter signals, obviously, at the top here. I have not took that off my uh, hunter. I've moved it to my warlock and titan as needed, but I've never like shoved it into the vault to just not use again. That has been glued to my guardian. It's a fantastic weapon. Um, and it, it took me off Riptide, even like we, we haven't had the, the, the chill clip changes yet, but uh, it, it got me to stop using Riptide because Riptide was the in the same position where it would just be glued onto my guardian. Um, Appetence I've been using a lot with my Stasis Hunter Shatter Dive builds. Um, I know Super Cluster is a very solid uh, Strand Titan uh, uh, weapon, um, but it's also just a great uh, shotgun in general. Doom Petitioner mm -hmm. LFRs aren't as good now, but still great. Uh, scalar Potential, solid arc uh, pulse rifle. I, it's just all round some great weapons. And they're craftable. <laughs> and they're craftable. And then there's yeah. the undying weapons. <laughs> well... <laughs> Should have should have uh, died. Honestly, man, <laughs> I I the uh, okay. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Yeah, yeah. There's something. There's something to be said here okay. for nano munitions. Okay, I did not think that this was something that I was very interested in using at all. And then I kept seeing people use subjunctive, and I finally gave it a try. Uh, you know, sets for all volt shot, and there's something there. Something is going on there it's pretty good nano munitions um is a pretty good trait um you know it's a pretty good frame it's got decent you know traits and stats and everything and yeah i don't know and plus um adhortative uh adhortative i don't know how you pronounce that exactly but um i you know adapters are really strong pulse frame as far as like that damage output goes and i it has not been good this season i think it could be good next season I think the reason subjunctive is doing so well is because it is a lightweight frame. Um, and I've made this point before where, you know, we've raved a lot with the Iclos SMG, but that's an aggressive frame. So if you're not a big fan of um, the, the kind of stability and the handling of aggressive SMGs, uh, then you might not like it. I mean, volt shot perpetual motion on Iclos SMG always just kind of, it kind of, completely outweighed the the malices that uh, aggressive SNGs had but once you started using subjunctive you don't have those malices to begin with like the handling's already at base 66 it's a lightweight you're getting the lightweight frame bonus of mobility so you're going to be moving around a lot more anyway uh, and yeah this is also craftable so like I, I completely agree here with saying that subjunctive is uh, in a league of its own compared to the other three weapons but uh, i'd give it a shot if you haven't already and again these are craftable so you can go around and play around with uh, subjunctive adhortative was the other one that i've been using a lot um but the only problem is it just doesn't quite feel great in like when i am using it i've tried to make it work i've got the heel clip incandescent enhanced roll it just something about it doesn't feel right it also doesn't help you've got foliage on the weapon that gets in the way <laughs> i'm not a fan of weapons that have things in my periphery that just uh distract me and this is one of them uh unfortunately but uh subjunctive does get the thumbs up so impetus you are wrong <laughs> <laughs> you know what impetus one, isn't wrong about you know what impetus isn't wrong about rosarago 4 holy cow mm. that thing goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with raid primary weapons for strength i love that piece of world loot and it's all i think i've only ever gotten about four drops of it but one of those four was all i needed baby so yeah weird situation this season where we had some just straight up meta options um that nobody could get. I mean, Parabellum, but tons of people are going for that heel clip frenzy roll. Marcado 45, um, Strand MG with uh, Onslaught. I got a demo Onslaught roll of that. That was fantastic for ad clear. Crux Termination, I know a lot of people were scrambling to see if they could get any of those for week three of Pantheon when we had the Arc Surge uh, up because that had some pretty 
powerful combinations uh, dropping there. So yeah, uh, world loot, very desirable, very hard to get right now. Um, I can't remember, are these going to be entering the law, law sector rotation in the final shape, or is it two seasons removed? They said something about this schedule years ago, yeah. and I've already forgotten about it's, it. So Someone's going to tag us, no doubt, in the server. Uh, I want to say it's going to be another, it might be like Act 2 of Episode 1. Okay, um, yeah. I want to say that. I'm not confident to say, yeah, they're going into the the, the Lost Sector pool. But, I mean, yeah, like you're absolutely right. Even, even Mercata, we don't tend to talk about a lot. It's still solid. It's a very solid uh, machine gun. But all four, like, all the other three are amazing. Rosa Raggle, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Parabellum, and Crux Termination, if, you know, it's up against some strong competition, like Apex, Predator, uh, and Cold Comfort. But a world drop arc aggressive rocket launcher going up against those beasts and it's like okay fair enough <laughs> um but yeah um uh, we'll, we'll we'll clarify if if they are dropping into the uh, the lost uh, sector uh loot pool playlist weapons on the other hand i'm looking at the list here i know saint's going to mention one of them uh so i won't i won't mention it here but uh yeah, I uh, Tusk of the Boar out of the list here um, is my highlight. Uh, I didn't get multi Mac with Under Over Frenzy, but uh, I I did get in Scissor. What did I even get on that? Um, oh, I got Envious Assassin and Target Locks. It's not ideal, but I've already got Appetence anyway, so I'm I'm fine for uh, a non. Agar Scepter in the top s- slot. Yeah, that Other was my that, slice roll for Cenotaph mm. users for Pantheon, and then I never ended up using it. So I'll say that no. was my uh, contest roll. That's what I'll be using in day one when I need to call out to my teammates to ask which target I just uh, <laughs> Cenotaph. <laughs> but the rest of these guys uh, tag yet? Or was it? <laughs> oh, I, I hit the thrall. Oh, sweet, dude. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, just go ahead and finish it. We won't get anything for it. Move on. The rest of the playlist weapons here, I'm not not even going to mention them. Uh, Saint, what's the one weapon that I was alluding to there? That's your I'm kind thinking of... Breakneck? Yes. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. Um, Breakneck's pretty solid. The, you know, kind of kinetic counterpart to Rosarago there in terms of having access to Onslaught. Um, I have a few that i've used a decent amount uh i think the one that i've used the most is keep away onslaught um i would have preferred like a probably like enlightened action onslaught or something like that um but it's also got access to kinetic tremors which is pretty nice uh auto rifles don't have the best combatant scaling multiplier for kinetic tremors but nevertheless you know it's uh it's still a solid trait and yeah outside of stuff that we've already talked about this pretty much the only one that i was really farming for i went for a couple of undercurrents um uzume was um yeah just not quite it and then same for wild style i think was the one that i was hoping i was the most disappointed in uh just because we had so few double shot frames and i think that wild style was well close um just not just didn't quite land how I, I wanted it to. It was just not quite as stacked up on the trait side as I was hoping for it to be, um, which is disappointing because it's such a cool weapon archetype, um, and, and it is still so rare. So I'm, I you know, I, I know that people were tired of seeing Hung Jury, but let's get a Wild Style, you know, V2. Okay, we don't we don't need a hung jury v five, but maybe we could get a Wild Style version two in the nightfall nightfall loot pool. Um, in the next episode or, or, or something like that because well you know saying with with an expansion anything that's in the rotation does get an updated perk pool yeah um yeah because they do that for life they did that for life fall and um and uh yes, witch queen because remember palindrome got stats for all an additional one for all when the witch king came out because it was in the it was in the so they do update the perks on some of those guns so you might you might get your wish so you're saying there's a chance there's a chance dude uh, I, okay. we don't know we right. won't know until yeah <laughs> until it drops so there's a chance all right i'm, I'm here for that i'll hold that hope there's there's a uh, there's hope for wild style yet 
We also had some, uh, a lot, I mean, I had a lot of weapons. Um, Reprise Prophecy, uh, and then also Warlords of Ruin, uh, as far as our, like, dungeon loot goes. Um, which, I, I mean, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say that Rocket Sidearms, wow. What a what a time. What a weapon archetype. A slow burn. I, people really did not catch on to what was going on with like indebted kindness. I feel like until um you know, into the light came out and then it just started blowing up when people realized their total damage output, ammo efficiency, the traits that this thing can get. Um yeah, it's it's ridiculous, and I'm I'm very happy to see Endeavor Kindness getting the respect that it deserves. Um, it, you know, any other highlights for you guys from uh, Prophecy and Warlords Ruin that you want to talk about? Well, just as a, a little addition to what you were commenting there about uh, Indebted Kindness, I think it was yeah we we were farming for Indebted Kindness at the, the start of the season with uh, Chris Proctor. We were doing the first encounter, oh, yeah, 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 because we caught on that oh this actually might be a killer hit i mean i'm mostly you know i know chris wasn't really letting on uh for obvious mm -hmm. reasons but uh we were we farmed that encounter for like was a good hour hour and a half just uh just getting some good rolls and i did manage to look i didn't get i still don't have um lead uh, lead from gold and vault shot but i did get a, a vault shot one with um enlightened action was the one i got so i'm fine with that i'm absolutely okay with that um yeah, the rest of the dungeon loot, not quite it, Chief. Uh, Reprise Prophecy, again, it's another one where all six of these weapons, solid. Like, some really great uh, weapon perks for both sandboxes or just for one of the sandboxes. Um, I've got a few uh, of these Prophecy weapons that I need to just check out uh, tonight before maintenance goes in tomorrow uh we're recording this on on a sunday uh so i need to just double check all the, the the weapon rules i have just to really confirm and lock in uh, what i'm taking into the final shape but uh again th those weapons will be uh enhanceable um in the final shape so uh, just some solid loot I, I i made this comment uh, just before we we uh, uh start recording I, i'm not sure if you were you were here yet saint but um i've just seen how many weapons we got this this season i mean obviously mm -hmm. we had the additional fact of into the light but even without into the light just a ton of weapons um i, I mean i suppose you're like wellsdale slammer prophet summoner they were probably going to come back with in uh with uh, the final shape anyway um again they were brought it seems like they were brought forward uh, just as a kind of filler uh, between the, the the delay of uh, the final shape being pushed to uh, June, uh, but again, even without those, just a really great selection of of loot. Even some of the you know Dreaming City undying weapons are just like some of these are usable. Some of these are fine for people who don't have the time to farm out for an indebted kindness or uh, reprise prophecy. So mm -hmm. it's a solid collection this season. Yeah, definitely agreed there. And uh, kind of like you said, it didn't really stop there. We we no. kept going, <laughs> um, and we got just, more. <laughs> just got a absolute, you know, great activity and obscenely strong loot set with Into the Light, which um, this has kept me playing way more Destiny than I anticipated that I would in this in this downtime. I'm thinking, oh, you know. Maybe I'll have some more time for Baldur's Gate 3 or I'll finish up my <laughs> Cyberpunk playthrough. Yeah, no shot, man. Uh yeah, they they uh they brought me right back in with a raid boss gauntlet, a 50 wave, you know, mode of of weapon farming for some of the best weapon rolls that we have seen in a long time on some legendary primaries and let me tell you, that did it. That has kept me grinding Destiny despite this this massive expansion. And I'm grateful that it happened because Pantheon and Onslaught have been some of the better activities and, and just like most invested I've been in playing in a while. Even more so than, than, you know, I thought Season of the Wish had a good launch. This was even better than that. And it's wild to say, but yeah, what a time it has been for the past month or so. Um just playing into the light. It's been awesome. 
Finally got a horde mode. It actually delivered on the request and the loot that it dropped was awesome. So yeah, Onslaught is, it did really steal Coil's thunder. I won't lie. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. Which, you know, hey, great. We got back-to-back excellent, uh, you know, seasonal. I'm using that with parentheses in quotation, seasonal activities here. But love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, have any of y'all played on Moth Yards? I, I don't think I've done any yeah. version of Moth Yards on, on like a 50 wave of any difficulty. <laughs> uh, once, you know, yeah. once. Yeah, oh, fair I, enough. I did a normal 50 wave mode on moth yards once and i was like mm, i'm good i'm just gonna stick to midtown and fall stock um yeah I, uh, onslaught's just been such a breath of fresh air um and again all of this was free this is not something that you had to pay yes like some of this is disappearing um the the shiny variants of the weapons that we've been farming will be gone uh it, it or i should say you'll you'll be able to keep them but you won't be able to farm them anymore that they will be unacquirable you'll just get the normal versions in the final shape we got the two reprise exotic missions very fun to play them once again and get craftable versions of whisper and outbreak perfected outbreak mm-hmm. perfect is going to be even stronger next uh in the expansion as well with the pulse rifle buffs and it being anti-barrier pulse rifle but truly the highlight for me, I mean, <laughs> this is highlight on top of highlight because Onslaught's just been a lot of fun. Uh, Impetus and I, we've been doing a lot of it um, with kind of other uh, folks, whether it's been Destiny Master Breakdowns or elsewhere. And like even times where we've failed, we're maybe at wave 45. It's just been such a great time. I've just had such a, a fun time farming those and just, uh, it's just like... U- utilizing the builds that are have been like custom tuned for that type of activity it's a lot of enemies a lot of tough enemies it can be pr- pretty annoying especially the fallen with the massive brig but uh it's just been such a fun but pantheon has been I-, I i was going into pantheon with like low expectations just because i was like do i really need to do this do i need to play pantheon like i've done all these raids i've done all these encounters uh but the moment we 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 uh attacked uh, the first week, Atrax Sovereign with Golgoroth Caretaker, uh, Explicator in Macrocosm, and Atrax herself. Herself was, uh, I was like, oh, okay, this is this is fun. And then the loot started dropping. I was like, all right, okay, <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> Fine, I'll get God Slayer. <laughs> um, a lot of fun. I'm really annoyed that Pantheon's disappeared, uh, but from reading what Bungie have been kind of you know between the lines I feel like they're going to get Pantheon to return in the future and I hope they expand on it I hope they add more kind of um kind of technical encounters those that are more mechanic based uh, I'm thinking of the relic run in Vare of the Disciple I want to see that as a Pantheon um a changed encounter that would be very interesting because I missed out on day one uh, challenge mode on Vare of the Disciple. So I want to get that uh, experience again. Or not again, but for the first time. And uh, yeah, just been a great experience the last uh, four weeks. Agreed. One hell of a time going through each week of Pantheon. And what a better way to ramp up for the contest mode rate, right? Which we talked mm. about. And I really feel like that did indeed come through... Uh, in terms of like a, a ramp up and a testing ground for for players that are looking to kind of get back into shape, so to say, um, or you know just prepare themselves for their first contest raid mode attempt. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. I'll happily put my hand up and say it it, it opened my eyes because we hadn't raided for uh, well since Crota's end since that reprise, but that was you know we're coming up for almost a year since that was reprised. Oh, uh, so, yeah, I know. But to go back and play Rolk and to, especially uh, Riven of Thousand Voices having to do it legit. I've done it legit before. It's a very fun encounter, but that was the most rusty I've ever been. And same with Nezarak. That was such a, a different experience. Like It was a completely different encounter compared to day one. Uh, I'm going to be brutally honest. That's what it should have yeah. been. <laughs> um, yeah. But, 
yeah, I feel fully prepared for uh, Saturday. Uh, sorry, for Friday. Uh, sorry, Impetus, you were going to say something there. No, I was just saying you, me, and Phaeton had gotten together after Crota's End and said we want to get a team together for the final shape mm-hmm. right? like a serious team to make a real go at it. Not for the race, obviously, just the completion of it and, and have a good time and stuff. And we did get a team together, the same group that we ended up doing Pantheon with, and we were doing Crota End challenges and stuff. And then it was kind of after that we were like, well... What are we going to do to practice once we found out that Final Shape was getting delayed massively and we didn't really have an answer and then Pantheon got announced and we thought, you know, let's just do Pantheon for fun. It'll be a nice time. We'll, we'll get it in for practice, <laughs> wink, wink. But yeah, and then we proceeded to actually really get, get some solid practice. I mean, I feel great going into the Final Shape raid with the team and stuff. I think we gel really well, which is the important part. And, you know, we've got a, a new title to, to show for our for our cohesiveness, which feels even better. If only we could say such positive things about the rest of the year, right? It's been it's been a long year. <laughs> I it, 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 I know it's not technically a year, but the year of light feel light fell feels like three destiny years in one. Um, it just feels like forever ago since the Witch Queen and Beyond Light and Shadowkeep and Forsaken. Um, mm. What a shame! It's kind of how I look at it, like. I think I I don't I obviously wasn't here for the for the actual dark ages of Destiny 2 but it feels like from listening to people that were there the consensus I get the mentality I get about it was I thought we were past this like I thought I thought the train was on a really good set of tracks and we were actually going full speed ahead and then Lightfall drops after after the Witch Queen, it feels like did so much to get people back into Destiny 2 after kind of the weirdness of Beyond Light. And, and you know, we got Abilities 3.0 and, oh, sweet, now we've got a new, our second Darkness subclass. And things are getting intense and we're going to finally get to meet the Witness after we figured out who the big bad is at the end of Witch Queen. And then... Yeah, I mean, the tone of the narrative was just so off. Why was it so silly and goofy? We, you know, it just was horrible. It felt so jarring compared to the stakes of everything. And then the Traveler dies at the end of the campaign, but we don't know that. There's just a hole in it. And then we go down to Zavala to wrap up after the campaign. And he said, yeah, the Traveler dies. We're like, what? What? That's the best we can do? And then... Every, we have so many questions that we then have to go back to a little kiosk in the final mission week after week to get some voice lines from some characters. I mean, everything about that story execution just pains me so much, especially after the really intriguing mystery of the Witch Queen, of, of hunting down clues, the big reveals, of course, of how the Hive got the light, and then, of course, the final reveal that they were lied to, and then who were they lied to by this mysterious figure? I mean, yeah, there was such a high saint. I feel like there was such a high going into Lightfall. And, uh, you know, I think the campaign was enjoyable to play. Like, the legendary campaign was fun. Getting to fight Callus in that ending was was certainly enjoyable. I liked that fight a lot. But everything that happened once we killed Callus, it just felt like was was a huge bluff, a whiff. I, I don't even know what to call it, man. Yeah, I... I would agree it's it's like it's nowhere close to like late d1 as far as like the content you know timelines go of like just long periods without any kind of content or like early d2 i would still take this way over that but um i think it it ultimately was the result of just some gambles that didn't really pay off um or bets that didn't really pay off Mm -hmm. you know if you want to say it like that and It's frustrating for sure, and I think a a big part of that is that the standard had been continually built up and set higher and higher for the expectation of the annual expansion. Um, You know, kind of starting off with, okay, Forsaken was insane, and and it totally brought back what is like a— another golden age for destiny as a franchise similar to what people would would say about the ticking king right and then beyond light comes out and yeah you know there's pros and cons um or, or shadow keep comes out and then beyond light and you know now beyond light's a little bit better story's getting more interesting raid was awesome 
Um, you know, we get the Witch Queen. Okay, things are getting even better. Like you're talking about the story and the narrative is just really cranking up and getting interesting. The gameplay is better than ever. Um, and the expectation was that we would be getting that or better, right? With 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 Lightfall. Um, and I I think that there's still so much that the expansion did for the game in terms of like the sandbox um and stuff like that and and the overall game as far as like the subclass balances and things like that go but yeah i i think it was just a just some bad um bad bets on like direction of the story and some things like that that just did not resonate with a lot of the player base and that just really clashed with the expectation that had kind of been set and been built up by some of the previous expansions and stories and stuff like that yeah court uh how are you feeling looking back on Lightfall, you know, a year later? Pretty disappointed with, with the narrative arc. Um, just, I always keep thinking it was, was Witch Queen narrative the exception to the rule? Um, the rule of, like, we get quite, you know, pretty subpar narrative arcs. Because the Witch Queen story was just amazing. Those th those eight missions, and then dealing with uh, Savathun, and then obviously she does return in some sort of format uh, later on with uh, the Witch season, um, which I'm fine with. But uh, it just, I just, I always keep thinking back, thinking like maybe they should have focused on Hive as being the big bad enemy rather than trying to like string all these other aspects like uh, we've got the Fallen, we've still got the Cabal, we've got the Taken okay now we're going to focus on the Witness as the big baddie and it, just thinking we had such strong enemies, such strong um, competition with Savathun but also with Rulk in, in the raid like going back and playing um, the the final encounter for Vow of the Disciple during Pantheon, and just with hearing Rulk doing his little kind of smug voice lines while you're you're doing the encounter, it was just like I really wish they focused on Sabathun and uh, Rulk as the big baddies um, rather than the witness. I, don't get me wrong, I'm still interested in seeing where the final shape goes, where it lands, and the future. But Lightfall just really put like a, a big question mark for me when it came to narrative. On the other side, the gameplay was like they brought in Strand. They they really like fleshed out the champion counters. There's just a ton of quality of life that they added with the Lightfall. But you know we weren't paying for the quality of life updates. I wasn't paying f full price just to play around with Strand. As much fun as it is, but what kept me in the game had these not been in the game had had strand not been in, in the game had defiant uh, battlegrounds deep dives the the summoning pits or uh, uh, seventh inspire or even the coil if they weren't present i don't know where i would be with uh, destiny uh, to be brutally honest here um i'm still here because i really love those gameplay loops i love those encounters i love where we're going with that uh, and seeing Pantheon and seeing Onslaught, I am fully committed to to more Destiny. If we keep going on with that, with we keep going with that, uh, the loop that drops and is tied to those activities. Love those activities. Love playing them. But it was just the narrative that was just like, oof, this is just like just got me really like thinking in overdrive, just thinking about Witch Queen and how you know that, that was such an excellent story storytelling that was was that really the exception that's mm -hmm. that was my thoughts back then it still is now i've you know i love neomuna as a location uh i i like to go back in there and just you know mess around the, the combatants are more kind of difficult in there they're, they're they are uh spiked up in difficulty compared to other locations um i do enjoy going back in there but yeah, the narrative just didn't land for me, unfortunately. I will say, you know, that kind of, I was not super interested in the story of the season of Defiance. And I, hmm. I think that the season of the Deep had some interesting elements to it, but ultimately felt a bit strange. Um, 
with the dungeon and then the work that was done there was super interesting. Um, even if I can get a little annoyed at the traversal sections, like that really is a wild dungeon narratively. And the whole storyline with also ended up being pretty interesting. Seems like kind of a strange way to deliver it. Um, season of the witch I was full in on that. I thought that that was really interesting, seeing Eris go through a whole transformation, this kind of, can she stay strong enough to resist this power temptation or not? Uh, uh, a, that was really interesting storyline. The Arcana cards, um, yeah, just really interesting stuff all throughout there. Really uh, enjoyed that, and then I, I felt like Wish kept it going pretty well. So, yeah, not, not a great start. You know, great gameplay up front on the year, not great narrative. And the back half of the year, uh, we get some better activities. The narrative started picking up more with the Wish and Witch, uh, which I both really enjoyed. And then same thing goes for the the lore of uh, Ghost of the Deep and Warlord's Ruin. Honestly, I, I just really enjoyed all that stuff. You see um, what I mean about Season of the Witch? Because it just yeah. focused on the Hive... It, it intrinsically was just a better season or it was one of the better seasons <laughs> i wouldn't say it's the best season we've ever had but because it focused just on the hive and it was just on oh it's savathun's back we've got eris morns in the action but also it's just hive in general because they're such a fleshed out uh enemy race their their backstory is now fully fleshed out we know it's all it's all established and it gave me the same vibe as a uh, witch queen because it was just yeah. focused on Hive and then going back to uh, Destiny 1 with King's Fall. Uh, yeah, that also brought, brought in the Taken, but again, it was mostly a, a Hive-focused uh, expansion. And it was just like, uh, man, like they just like if they could just focus on one thing and they would just be fine. I agree. Defiance was maybe one of the weaker ones. Um, I still think it was better than the actual uh, Lightfall story. Um, Deep was a bit of a there's always one out of the four seasons where it's like okay we're going to do something a little bit random uh, I mean I, I I love hearing from Sloan and uh, Asa uh, mm -hmm. that, that kind of story arc was pretty compelling uh, and Wish was fun because it did give me that Forsaken vibe um, but overall I think the seasons uh, the season uh, narrative has been fine it's been good there's been some low points um i think deep was the, the lowest for me um no one pun intended here uh with it being season the deep but uh, uh the rest has been fine it's been it's been a fun experience but i think what's really brought and kept me in even more than ever has been the gameplay loops it's been those activities like deep dives um uh, the summoning pits the coil they have just been fantastic to go in and just play it with you guys or uh folks over in destiny massive breakdowns or lfging i, I did, did quite a lot of lfging during deep witch and wish um mm -hmm. especially with the uh, fire team finder uh, mm -hmm. entering the game uh so it's been a lot of fun um but part of me i do wish that they just keep a focus on the story arc and hopefully we get that this time with the uh, the seasonal structure is uh, being reduced down to three uh, episodes rather than four seasons. And those are split into various uh, acts, so one, two, three. Uh, so nothing else has been talked about with the, the episodes, probably for obvious reasons, with it being a post-Light v. Dark saga uh, storyline. Uh, but uh, no, I, I'm looking forward to it. I don't want to be too... Uh, down and too gloomy when it comes to uh, Lightfall and uh, the rest of the seasonal structure. But uh, I'm still holding out hope that the Echoes, you know, which seems to be a Vex kind of themed storyline. It looks line, like it. Could be interesting. You know, Beyond Light had some really interesting, you know, Fallen ish, Vex ish lore in there. Um, and I would really, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that they could double down on the Vex and more about their motivations, their leadership, their origins, and all that stuff in Echoes and see uh, what's really going on there. Because I feel like uh, it seems like relatively untapped to me. I agree. I agree entirely. Um, yeah. I think Season season of Defiance is going to be especially hard just because that was the season that we we lost our Titan Vanguard. Um 
Mm. And it's that's just been on my mind, of course, hearing Keith David's voice in the trailers and knowing that he he's not here to see the end of it. Um, and, they, you know, he was such an avid Destiny player. Obviously, a Warlock main. Gotta love the guy. He's got great taste. But um, I <laughs> think that that was especially hard. I think that definitely took a lot of, of kind of the momentum, even, even if lightfall had been a, a, I think a success, I think that still would have really stung and, and, and hurt as much as it did. Um, yeah. And, and then deep again, narratively very confusing. Not, not sure why we chose to got, uh, chose to get a cutscene about the witnesses origin from a character that we've technically had access to the entire length of destiny two. And also just chose not to tell us anything about it until now. Fine. <laughs> but Eris's story conclusion, as I said, when we did our review of season of the witch, love that. I thought that was brilliant and, and wonderful and a great payoff and season of the wish. I mean, it certainly sounds like it's, it's you, these kinds of seasons are the, the, the tie into the next expansion, the most direct tie into the expansion. Um, so very excited to get a way into the traveler and then the Vex involvement seems to be tying into the, the echoes episode as well. So very excited to see how that gets built upon love the dungeons. I think those were fantastic. Again, the loot could have been a little bit better for warlords ruin, but you know, it was still a fun dungeon and and the final boss fight is, is very unique and and was quite fun. Really enjoyed Heffen's vengeance. Um, yeah, raids. I mean, Roots, my first day one clear. It will always have a soft spot for that reason and that reason alone. Uh, I'll probably never run it <laughs> after Pantheon, though, because it's just not fun to play and I have all the loot. Crota's End, I need to play it more. Um, I didn't really do a whole lot of, of that raid as much after I, you know, we were doing some of the challenges and stuff. I, I still need to get some red borders, and I don't even I won't even be able to play with one for Thrall on... Uh, on the exotic, because I don't have the catalyst unlocked yet, so that'll be something I'll need to tie up at some point in the future. But yeah, a contentious year for sure. To say nothing of the uh, ddosing, the craftening controversies oh, the and scanning. I know, man. Dude, there, how, there's just so much stuff that happened. That? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it yeah. was definitely really... going offline every week. I mean, it oh, was, <laughs> it was it was a bad period. It really has been a wild. 15 months <laughs> um then of course the layoffs i mean again like yeah yeah when you look at it in totality for me i'm not sure truthfully if i'm actually hyped for the final shape or if i'm just excited to play new content like i i truly can't say that i'm i'm excited for the final shape i will 100 percent cope to that but am i hyped <sighs> I don't know it's it's hard to be excited about stuff knowing that a lot of the people that made what i'm about to play don't even work for the company anymore you know like not that i knew them personally necessarily but still a lot of those people have played a, have have played a big part in my enjoyment of this product and in my involvement on this podcast and the wider destiny community and so i feel bad that they're not going to be able to see the the saga through of course, you know, in a different way, but somewhat similar to how Lance won't be able to see this saga through and his involvement. But, um, yeah, you know, I'm I'm excited, but it, I'm weary at the same time. Like I'm tired, boss. Uh, I want it to be Tuesday, but at the same time, man, I wish I could have been more excited to to wish that it was Tuesday. You know? Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely been a year. I have a lot of ups and downs. Uh, I feel you on that one. I, I, I'm optimistic for the way that they close out the year and the way that it has been delayed, um, which was initially kind of strange, but I, I'm feeling that it will be a meaningful conclusion. Um, you know, can't say f- for sure until really friday night probably around 2 a.m if i'm being realistic with myself uh but we'll we'll see how the the raid with the witness plays out um and and another thing i will say that i'm i'm encouraged by recently is the conversation around the future of destiny as a franchise and the way that some of the developers will will talk about um well in the next few years kind of things and statements like that give me hope that 
there 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 is intention you know behind um the the longer term future of destiny whatever that may look like yeah yeah and here's hoping we'll be we'll be here to cover cover it all as well um we'll we'll obviously keep going as long as their interest in destiny we've got interest in destiny as well um but uh I speak for the three of us we're we're all uh raring to go ready to gear up get into prismatic and start messing about on tuesday um but yeah to to kind of pivot back into um kind of really big highlights i think the dungeons and one of the raids for this year were really like top tier content uh go so deep i still enjoy playing it's the better of the two in terms of loot. Uh, Warlord Rune is the better of the two in terms of encounters. So, like, uh, the raid and dungeon team are killing it. Like, absolutely killing it in terms of uh, whether it's loot or, or kind of uh, tying uh, the loot to the dungeons. And then the encounter itself, like War- Warlord's uh, Heffened encounter is just one of the best encounters i've ever played in a dungeon it just feels it feels like a raid uh which is I, i'm all for like i am really truly for for the uh uh for that type of content so i'm looking forward to the two dungeons we're getting this year so like i am at least going to be playing them um regardless of what happens uh, and that uh, yeah cross and reprisal like we were all thinking it would be oh this is gonna be this is not gonna be it chief but uh we went in there and we got uh our our asses kicked by uh uh the <laughs> the wizard and crota <laughs> and i think i speak for the three of us again and say we we got strand and we've been thoroughly enjoying our respective subclasses and the other subclasses as well like i've had a blast with strand flying around as a hunter just had a just a lot of fun uh with that new element i think they've they compared to stasis the um the uh, they they added a lot more content related to strand compared to stasis you know when stasis launched we had like one exotic uh, tied to stasis this time around we had a lot more legendaries it was a lot more fleshed out uh, and it felt a lot more balanced you know the start of stasis was w- a wild west of uh, of weirdness of pvp being absolutely a dumpster fire um but uh, strand has been a lot more balanced it's been a lot more uh, uh more of a fun time and uh yeah, some fun times with Strand. Uh, regardless of the, the the narrative arc, I've had a lot of fun with Strand flying around in all the, the content that I was talking about earlier on. I think as a kind of final note before we kind of end things for this episode, I think it'd be good just to kind of list off our kind of highlights in terms of uh, exotics and legendaries. The stuff that we've been using a lot, whether it's new from that year, or from the year we've just played, or if it was buffed or overhauled, just what were our big highlights. So I'll kick us off with exotic armor. Biggest one uh, for me in terms of a rework was Lucky Raspberry. I know it's not been uh, fondly met, but I think it's been one of the, the the better reworks. It's been a big win for me. Conceptually, I do love the idea of Moth Keeper's Wraps, but I think it needs a little bit more help. Just really pivot into it being a utility weapon. And I alluded to at the top of the episode much earlier on, a few hours ago at this point, uh, Triton Vice has been a lot of fun and I will be taking it into the final shape because I want to really play around with uh, Stylus Executioner, applying Weaken with my uh, uh, my glaives. Uh, exotic weapons real quick here. Conditional final- finality. Monte Carlo's bayonet. Really love Monte Carlo. I love the bayonet there. Uh, Wicked Implement has seen like I was not a fan of it when it came out, and now I'm a big fan. Uh, if you've played with me in some of the onslaught, I've been I have been using Wicked Implement a lot. Uh, that uh, rework to the catalyst it, it, it's spawning a, uh, a uh, headstone on precision kill, uh, and it just having a lot more synergy with the stasis sandbox. I look forward to using it even more with the new and improved. 1000 Voices got a buff, it got a slight damage increase and more reserves. Loving 1000 Voices. And uh, for my last pick here was Winterbite, which came out at the start of the year. Uh, it's been eating, it was eating things up in Defiant Battlegrounds. I haven't had a lot of opportunity to use it 
since just with the the scale of a lot of the rooms that we are in they're more circular they're they're more compact compared to uh defined battlegrounds which were more linear it was like point a to b to c uh and finally the big one for me was buried bloodline which has just been glued to my void hunter this entire time and it will be glued to my prismatic hunter no doubt (laughs) (laughs) um legendary weapons scatter signal midnight coup brackets my beloved uh mountaintop (laughs) edge transit what year are we in i've just mentioned three weapons from like six years (laughs) ago (laughs) uh word of crota and of course indebted kindness uh impetus what's your big highlights so for exotic armor I've got a new. I'll pick a new one here. Cenotaph mask. I think being being the mm. highlight. Um, some people don't care for its aesthetics, and those people are wrong. But it was also nice <laughs> to have a weapon, an armor piece for trace rifles that was actually you know being a, a big game changer. Um, and of course, so much of a game changer that it's it's getting nerfed. But um, that has been a lot of fun to play with. And then uh, another armor piece that got a rework would have been Karnstein's armlets, which became uh very powerful and i've been rocking you can rock it on any subclass it is tied into the solar verbs but i've been rocking it on strand i had initially started out with swarmers when strand dropped and then pivoted over to karnsteins because i can take advantage of the arcane needle armor charges and that has been a ton of fun um it's what i used to to solo flawless prophecy this past season um it's very very uh, it, it, it holds up quite well, surprisingly. I think you could probably take advantage of, um, like a one, two punch weapon to really make sure that the melee does get the kill. But Karnstein's also works on finishers, which is where it really becomes relevant at any difficulty level. You can burst down an enemy, uh, at, you know, week four of Pantheon and then go in for the finisher and get the cure times two or cure times three and resto times two for a few seconds. And, and, you know, suddenly you're alive and, continue to stay alive so well so that's been a wonderful surprise i never thought i'd be building into a melee build on warlock but karnstein's has has really broken the mold for me on that and that's been a fun play space to explore on the exotic weapon side buried bloodline far and away has really renewed my enjoyment um it is every time i go over to my hunter that's it's it's just saved into my void hunter loadout as what's in my energy slot it's always buried bloodline you can't go wrong with it i love it so much it's been a ton of fun to play with an onslaught i will continue to play with it i never thought i'd be a sidearm main but that has <laughs> definitely changed my opinion and i i also had used forerunner too in onslaught as well so i've got that option in pve that's been a ton of fun um trying to think of any other exotic weapons that really come to mind wicked implement was a pain to get and but but it has been very enjoyable and i think it will be i'm very excited to try it of course with our stasis rework especially on prismatic as well um let's see any other exotics no i think i'm just going to stick with berry bloodline and i mean again on the legendary front i will again say sidearms once again heliocentric i have the uh the heel clip frenzy and it is good it is great dare i say again things impetus never thought he would be saying um i would definitely <laughs> want to get a heel clip incandescent roll of that but i i will be just fine with what i do have um obviously the rocket sidearm which i don't it doesn't really feel right to say yes i'm a sidearm main and i use indebted kindness that's obviously a, a completely different tier of weapon but between heliocentric and actual sidearm and indebted kindness and of course we know we're getting more rocket sidearms in the future um with, with the with the actual expansion coming on tuesday i i'm very much i'm very much looking forward to my close range <laughs> options which uh that are an smgs which feels um refreshing i'll say so i i would love to go back to brigand's law era and say to impetus back then yeah you're going to be a sidearm main just not in a way that you you you're thinking <laughs> <laughs> i should probably and just call, leave i should probably that. call brigands <laughs> i should probably call her uh saint what were your <laughs> options <laughs> i would say yeah precious scars rework was huge um the worm god's caress rework i believe was also this year and that was, I mean, obviously, you yep. know how that has turned out. Um, new exotics got to be Pyrogale, really fun. Um, and Consecration is just getting even better, which is awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Navigator is something truly unique, but really it's Dragon's Breath coming back in such a glorious way that did it for me because it's like such an old weapon and it was fine in its original form and it just rocks now and I love that thing. Um, man, yeah, Dragon's Breath, what a fun weapon to use. Uh, and it's and it's like it's good enough to be viable in like a pretty good amount of scenarios, which feels great. Um, and then. Yeah, I would say recently I've gotten a little bit more into Final Warning, which is funny because it's been out for so long now. You know, it was like one of the original expansion exotics. I've just now kind of coming around on that one a little bit more. Um, I believe, uh, I know Randy's Throwing Knife reprises this year, which I've enjoyed greatly. Um, was Warden's Law this year as well? Yep. I believe, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, sees a ton of play on lucky pants, but also I just really enjoy the way that they brought that weapon back. Um, and then I would say also, uh, you know, kind of a sleeper one or maybe just not as common was maldiction. Uh, it's just like the ritual hand cannon that had enlightened action and explosive payload on it, which, um, nothing crazy, but just like a solid gun, uh, for anybody that's like just getting into the game or coming back to the game. It's something you could really easily get. Um, it's got explosive payload and enlightened action, which, uh, you know, are solid. It's got a really solid stat package for 120 RPM hand cannon, and it's got wild card, which is a really fun origin trait. Another, you know, small, like, highlight from the year. Um, yeah, not something I see used or, or, like, talked about a ton, but definitely something that I think is a lot of fun. Um, and then... Lastly, I would say Nation of Beasts, which I believe that raid reprise was also this past yep. year during, yeah, like for second season. Um, Nation of Beasts with Dragonfly and Volshot is like such a fun weapon to use, and I really enjoy that thing. Um, it's, yeah, I don't know. It's just solid. I, I If you have not used Nation of Beasts reprise at all, I would definitely recommend it. It's a fun arcane cannon, uh, especially with that combo um can just deal out a ton of damage and yeah just just an absolute treat to use uh randy's hasn't seen a ton of playtime this year but i think that with the unstuffed scout coming up that it will probably get a little bit of play along with like hungry and stuff like that and randy's also has access to kinetic tremors um which as a weapon you know highest rpm and its archetype is also always great for uh using something like kinetic tremors uh yeah i think that's about it uh i will say sin so you mentioned precious scars there which is a very good uh rework i was just thinking red death uh will give you and your fellow teammates cure stacks um if you pair that with precious scars you've got your own personal well of radiance (laughs) we got a a certified support class out here (laughs) Who even needs to Don, dude? Just delete, just delete it. It's not even IP defining anymore. Just be your little precious scars guy. Yeah, dude. I'm just, I'm just team healer over here. All right. I'm, okay. Hey, wait. Yeah. I'm all for it. I, I'm definitely into that. I'm definitely into the mobile team healing for sure. For sure. Uh, you guys got anything to add on? It's been a long episode. We've covered a ton of stuff yeah. from the past three weeks and from the past year. Uh, any, any last thoughts before we wrap it up? I think just the the tail end of this uh script uh we or i put in here just a, a little bit of kind of a misc uh miscellaneous and just regards to the meta uh i i like rockets have been eating good since mm-hmm. the the fall of lfrs we've seen some action with uh grenade launchers they've went up which is great to see uh and yeah lfr certainly aren't as strong now but i think we're in a really great uh heavy weapon meta it has stabilized a lot more uh like before like i think the last time we did this was looking back on witch queen and i think the comments we made were like oh lfrs were reigning supreme and like where's the other options um so i I wouldn't say it's perfect but it has stabilized and we're in a really great spot in terms of heavy weapon um meta i mean everything's fairly viable uh, sorry not everything but most of the uh weapon selection in our heavy slot uh, is fairly reliable help like, like we were we, <laughs> we were using sleeper simulant for a few of the pantheon bosses which yep. i wasn't expecting um 
Uh, 1000 Voices, very interesting to see that come back. Uh, Leviathan's Breath, always a great pick to come back. Whisper of the Worm for Oryx and some other encounters. Uh, Saint, you mentioned Tractor Cannon a few times in this episode. Absolutely agree. Tractor Cannon's seen a, a big uptick. Legend of Acrius, uh, I think. Was the trench barrel was was it the 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 start of that might have been with lightfall if I recall correctly yeah yeah um yeah Legend of Acris with uh, trench barrel like but that's been a really good one when we've been farming um Ekthar uh, Ekthar <laughs> yes thank you for shot swap um, weapons yeah how can I forget yeah. <laughs> Uh, and just a great selection i'm looking at like even swords are like they're you know we're just a bit iffy with swords at the moment but they've had their fair share in some content um crota you know using lament or um bequest but to, to really wrap up my point here like i think there's been a lot of archetypes that have been fairly usable fairly viable in a lot of content and we're getting some buffs to some of the the kind of outliers uh, you know, Colony's not going to be a big DPS option, but it's going to be a big fun option, uh, much like Salvation's Grip. Uh, that rework I've really enjoyed. And, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to some of these kind of outlier uh, changes. I think we're in a really good spot. That that was my kind of uh, highlight in, term, in terms of the meta and any, any kind of miscellaneous stuff that we've uh, missed out. So, um, Emptus, you got any final thoughts here? Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely feels like going into the final shape, our outliers have been reined in. I think the one overperforming weapon type would be rocket sidearms, but that doesn't feel very fair because they obviously debuted the season and there's only one of them. <laughs> uh, I'm sure they will probably get brought back down to earth at some point in the coming year. My only hope is that we get at least one rocket sidearm in every element before that happens, but... Yeah, I think, I mean, and that's a special weapon too. That's not even a heavy weapon. Like the heavy mm. weapons do have clearly defined roles. They have fantastic options, plural, for all of them. Um, you know, we're finally getting to see more weapon uh, archetypes drop and, and get continued support for, which is nice to see. I think it's one thing to just get new weapon archetypes, but there's only one of them and there's nothing else that we see. But we're starting to see more and more of those, which is nice, and we're not getting that Coriolis force uh, effect where it comes out, it doesn't get you know iterated upon, and and then it just kind of sits there in limbo. So yeah, I'm very excited for for new weapon archetypes, for continued support for the newer weapon archetypes. I'm happy with where the heavy weapon meta is. It certainly feels like there's options for everyone now, and for and multiple options for every encounter that needs a heavy weapon. How about you, Saint? Yeah, I'm looking forward to more uh, horizontal volley uh, fusion rifles, you know, in the final shape. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I... Chris, do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I feel pretty good about where the overall meta, you know, has, has kind of landed. You know, you, you've got rockets and you know, GLs that seemingly are sitting on top still, but overall I feel like we're in a decently balanced meta and that we, that we have been for, you know, most of this season, um, despite a few outliers, um, it's, I feel like nigh impossible, especially in a game that has so many weapons and traits, uh, as a game like destiny two does to get everything perfectly balanced, but it feels good to be in a spot where, a lot of options are at least viable um and I, I think that's always like you know a goal of the weapons team i don't want to speak too much for them but um that is that is my hope certainly at least and it feels good to see so many different special weapons getting play right um shotguns see a massive amount of play on like one two punch builds or, or sometimes even during dps phases um with some swaps there um grenade launchers still popular sniper rifles still seeing play fusion rifles getting play rocket sidearms are getting play um yeah i'm i'm really happy about yeah where that where that special weapon you know sandbox is at particularly uh primaries i think have been you know pretty out of balance in favor of hand cannons for a while but i i believe that this upcoming sandbox change will, will even that out a lot as autos 
Um, and scouts get some buffs, you know, pulse rifles get big buffs, trace rifles also see some big buffs. That is my one hope as as far as that goes. Is like trace rifles feel like the one special weapon that have not seen a lot of viability in in the recent you know seasons and stuff like that. So I'm hoping to see that get brought up. But yeah, other than that, I'm feeling good. <sighs> all right, that is all that we've got for episode 105. Longest episode we've done in a while here. Um, Hopefully you're listening along as you wait during downtime or, or to sign in on queue for the final shape. I know that we are all looking forward to its release this coming Tuesday. Thanks for listening to another episode of PVE. We also want to thank our audio engineer, Autodidactos, for keeping us sounding great each and every episode. My name is Sink Beer. You can find me by that name on social media or hanging out in the Massive Breakdowns Discord server or in-game playing through the Legend campaign with these lads on Tuesday. Impetus, where can our listeners find you? You can find me by that name, Impetus, in Discord and in Destiny with my trusty Truth and my sidearm and my other sidearm in the other slot because I am now... A new guardian as I head into the final act of the Light and Darkness saga. Court, where can we find you? Yeah, my name's Court. You can find me on various social media websites as Court Projects. You can find me on Discord as Court Projects as well. You can find my infographics and spreadsheets over on the Destiny link tree for science. That's Destiny Spreadsheets. Uh, you can also find some amazing content and documentation from other scientists and great folks over in the uh, science community and yeah you'll also find me in game uh, wrecking some dread with my buried bloodline and uh, yeah we will see you all in the final shape have a great time see you soon